hate rappers. Your bars is weak, you should drop the pen. I fuck these hoes once, then I fuck them again. For my pop in the pen, doing 10. When? When I was growing up needing a father. Instead, I got a sack of weed and a revolver from this hustler who said, I see you living with your single mother and your little brother. And ain't no other way to get paid today in this motherfucker. Look, my ex girl, ancient history. I'm the beast looking at ancient history. I'm living, you kidding me? Canary diamonds flying to the Canary Islands. Seriously. You need more bars? Dig. Dig this. Your girl call you a boyfriend. She call me a blessing. Seldom does a legend speak the mere peasant. So listen closely. If you could walk in my shoes, you would think you just stepped in heaven. You must be deaf if you ain't heard my name. I expand my mind so much I got stretch marks on my brain. You give a black eye to the game every time you give a black eye to a dame. You do what a bitch would do. I group around killers who in his beef they get deep after they self what would Hitler do. Yeah. Who are you? I am Marquette Canada. Burton. Nice to meet you. Okay. Yes. Yeah, I am many like, things. It's about okay. I would tell you my real life, but you would swear I'm lying. I wish you could see this fine Hawaiian I'm trying to fly in. She said she got vacation time. I said, go ahead, take it off. She's sitting on the plane. She said, I love you before she take off. Daddy's home. Ah. This is a big home. <laughs> Uh, if you can't find your girl, if you can't find your girl, that's cause she's on my nuts in this, in this crazy world, in this crazy world, and I'm you wish you had one of these gold watch black face. I think it's Sudanese. I'm in Hanoi with two of these bad Vietnamese chicks. Like, who is he? Velvet T, gold watch on me. I'm keeping it P. Debo in a tux. I'd be a fool if I love him, love him. You'll be a fool if you trust him, trust him. Here with my niggas, we keeping it gangsta. Yeah, I'm a slayer, I'm just keeping it player. Player, player, player. I'm fucking her now, we're man, eating it later. Ugh. That's maybe why he is a hater. Hater, 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 hater. I'm wearing all black like I'm being a raider. Raider, 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 raider. You talk to police, we call you a traitor. Traitor, 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 traitor. I'm running the city, they call me for favors. I'm running the city, they call me the mayor. It's getting political with me. My street presidential, she really me the my line ho quit banging my, my line ho when yeah. you see Pimmy me act, act like you don't, don't even know, know me ho when you see me act like you don't even know me ho come on baby get a clue how you do what you do how do you fall in love with me but i'm not in love with you peace to the saints peace to the saints Peace to the saints. Sure. Peace to all the saints. Peace to all the saints. Peace to the saints. You did. Put on the nation. Yeah. Here you go. Respect. We out here. The saint and the sinner. You got this from a pill. Peace to the saints. It's the one and only. The big homie. The floral pimping today. Ladies and saints, it's been a very busy day for me. I hope it's been a productive day for you. I'm excited to have this conversation. And for those of you who are new, get you caught up on how all of this started. And also, you know, kind of bring you into some of the, the inner workings of the, the YouTube world. And after that, I think you all will understand why I would never call myself a YouTuber and also why I rarely collaborate with folks.
But first, let us start with our tradition. Show love to those who show love to you. Thank you, Dimitri. On PayPal, we have EJ said, tuition, go ahead, King, wear your crown. Peace to the saints. Peace to the saints. In a real way, I appreciate you. And shout out to the real men who can show respect to others who are achieving. It is those among us who have low self-esteem that when you see someone else shining, you feel as though your light has been dimmed. Okay, we have... Melvin came in on Cash App. Here is what he wants to say. He says, peace to the saints about the SAS and fitness course that was suggested on the Sunday service. I am willing to collaborate and contribute in any way to bring it to the light, being it is a major concern of the saints. Peace to the saints. That is interesting. We do need to put that on the to-do list. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, we have none of the above came in with $50. Baller alert. Said masterclass performance, sir. I wish the fit was more super villainous, but the result sure was. Hopefully the world puts some respect on Flex Luther's name, making us all proud. Peace to the saints. Peace to the saints. And that's one thing I often remind you all of is that as a man, you can say that you're a lot of things, but to deliver the goods is a different thing. And you'll observe consistently. I deliver the goods every single time. Never choke, never back down. I'm always the same person. And that is what I teach you all. We don't do building an image. We do building men. Okay, on Cash Up, we have Hector said Debo in a tuxedo. You dig. We have Devante said peace to the saints. My boots, my boots laced. WW3 might come early. You dig. In a real way. And we have Ivan said, thank you for always keeping it real. Peace to the saints. Peace to the saints. And Amadi just joined Patreon. Shout out to Amadi. I, I see uh, one person in the chat who probably isn't serious about what they said. They wrote debate Nick Fuentes. He's scared. I requested the debate several times. He is scared. And this is often the case when you find these persons are outmatched. Now, they look good when they're talking among the, the dimwits on YouTube. And that's the problem with the internet is that no one has letter or credential. And the irony is that I'm one of the few persons on the internet who are actually qualified to teach, for example. Like, I'm, an actu I'm actually trained in teaching. Um, you have all of these other folks. They don't have any formal education. They've not worked for large corporations. They've not run successful corporations. Yet here they are trying to teach. And then what's more is you have to think about the subconscious drivers of these people. I don't want to put a name on it because people try to deny this thing that we know is all happening. But how strange is it that the guy that has multiple degrees from top universities, the guy who's built significant corporations, the guy who's, you know, been recognized by the Johns Hopkins University as a distinguished alumnus. Why is that guy, why would you question his credentials? Well, it wouldn't make any sense except that, number one, the haters, which means wicked people, they're lying. Why? They're lying because I've lived in such a straightforward, proper, upright way, given what I started with, that there's nothing for them to talk about. So they actually have to make up lies. And that's a beautiful thing. We have Jordan also came in on Cash App. He said, what a sensational beatdown. Blessings to you and the saints. I'm praying that this is what will finally wake the world to what the assassin is all about. In a real way. And we're going to continue delivering tremendous value. For those of you who are new to what we do, I often focus on health, wealth, and relationships. That is what I teach. That's what I know. We live that every single day. For example, if you follow me on Instagram, you would have seen before this, I was getting in a very uh, very rigorous workout. We believe in 30 minutes of sweat every day. Exercise is prayer. Sweat is the holy, wa holy water. We don't consume any intoxicants, drugs, alcohol, cigarettes, sugars, uh, sodas, things like this. And so we have a three-sentence Bible. Be yourself. Be good to yourself. Be good to good people. Period. Fantastic. Now let's get to this work. Let's get to this work. Now, first and foremost, we have to ask ourselves, was that a setup? All of the YouTubers I heard speak on it, they said, yeah, that's a setup. All the YouTubers said it was a setup. Many of the fans said it was a setup. I saw some fans saying, no, nah, I don't think that was a setup. Well, let's go back through the history and ask ourselves some questions. Put on your critical thinking hats with us, folks. The first question is, how did the Whatever Podcast become aware of Marquette Devon Burton, the saint in the center? Or how did Marquette Devon Burton, the saint in the center, become familiar with the Whatever Podcast? So I'm going to queue up our first video. 
And please do confirm that the audio is good once the video starts playing. I have it at uh, one hour, 43 minutes, 40 seconds. Is that the timestamp? Yes. Um, and no, you need to go back. I sent you the timestamp. One hour, 42 and six seconds. One hour, 42 and six seconds. I'll go back even a little farther than that. While you're doing that, a P came in on Cash App and said snakes everywhere in that whatever podcast. <laughs> right. And you know, that's when you really can find the measure of yourself as a man, when you are in a, a, a din of, uh, a din of demons, hyenas, vultures, and you come out without a scratch. That's when you can find the measure of yourself. I often remind that baboons can't look the lion in the face. You observe that Adam 22 couldn't even make eye contact. Very strange, isn't it? That's what they do. They get all these cute tattoos and all of a sudden they think they're Rambo. Huh? Can't even make eye contact? Thought you were a grown man. It's a pity. It's a real pity. Yes, we're going to get into it. Now, here, uh, how did Marquette Devon Burton hear of the Whatever podcast? I was not a consumer of their content. I was aware of their podcast in as much as people have mentioned them as a carbon copy of Fresh and Fit. And they wouldn't be the only ones. Many persons have tried to emulate uh, Fresh and Fit's model and whatever has done it most successfully. And so they've been uh, spoken of as the white version or whitewashed version of Fresh and Fit. Undoubtedly, anyone who would attempt that model would have uh, a different flavor, or in some cases, they might be flavorless. I even tried it myself on for size. I just didn't like having to hang out with the girls afterwards. You dig? You know, they, they're a bit annoying. It's, it's a cumbersome show. It takes a lot uh, to create a show in general, especially that kind of show. You're dealing with uh, floozies who are dishonest, unreliable. They know show. They want to hang out afterward. You know, they're they're promiscuous. It's just not an energy I want to be around on a regular basis. And so I always commend those gentlemen for they are innovators in the YouTube space. They're extremely diligent and hardworking, and I consider them to be good friends. That's how I heard of the Whatever Podcast as a uh, a whitewash version of Fresh and Fit, which doesn't take anything away from the Whatever Podcast. For I am one of the few persons on YouTube who's a bona fide businessman, which is to say, before YouTube, I was actually doing business, man. In as much as that's the case, we understand in business, what happens? You emulate, you emulate the leader in your category. So when whatever industry, whoever's winning, you say, okay, there's something to learn. Let's see if we can take some of their magic sauce. You telling me if Coca-Cola could get the recipe for Pepsi, they wouldn't try it out for size? Absolutely. If only to destroy Pepsi. You dig what I'm saying? That's called business. Business is ruthless. Those who know nothing about business, they say foolish things. Oh, that's a copycat. Well, duh. But the question is, is it a successful, profitable copycat? And in their case, absolutely is profitable. No doubt about that. Now, I'm not speaking to the characters of Brian or Chase or anyone else associated with that podcast. I'm just merely speaking of business, which is what I know. Anyway, so that's how I became familiar. And how they became familiar with me, I don't know. I cannot say. But we all know that I'm your favorite YouTuber's favorite YouTuber. So many times on the internet, being that I am the intellectual vanguard in this men's space, though I do not consider myself a part of the manosphere, and certainly I'm not red pill. I spread this ism. You dig? So in as much as I'm your favorite YouTuber's favorite YouTuber, you've heard my message before. Other persons have picked it up and had it come out of their mouth. Huh? That's just the truth. And I don't waste time trying to be fake humble or fake modest. I just proceed with the truth. And I'm comfortable with the truth. So a lot of people watch me. A lot of your uh, favorite YouTubers watch me, and they regurgitate what I say, which is fine. Now, this is the clip that uh, caused us to engage one another. And, you know, shout out to their their technical expertise. They have a, a, a really impressive setup there. In fact, I should probably engage them on a conversation about that. Very impressed with that. Ease thing. I've heard of equality of opportunity, equality of outcome. You're, but equality agreeing, of, you're agreeing that equality Man, they of every once in a while have a real big girl on there. I don't know if they put the big girl on there for comedy relief or just like, I don't know if these guys are liberal and they're like diversity and inclusion. Bring in the fat one. I don't I don't know if maybe one of them is a chubby chaser. Who knows? But they always have a girl who's quite hefty. Amazing. Maybe she carries everybody's stuff inside. I don't know. But she looking real squishy. Anyways, carrying on. 
value is true or false? True. Okay. Yeah. I think it's equality of value in the sense of like your value in terms of your life, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let's see. We have the saint and the sinner. Are we going to talk about how Tiffany and maybe others have the archaic so first, belief that the way he started reading it, you could tell that he was familiar with the handle or the moniker, the saint and the sinner, which I believe they're using stream labs in fact i'll have to take a look into that technology when i have some time but uh, i don't use this i don't know if you can uh you just like hand type in uh, manually these kind of statements i don't know i presume it's probably possible um so who knows how easy it is for them to have generated this themselves but just making a simple analysis of human behavior we could see in his uh change in tonation that he's familiar with the name the saint and the sinner now, we saw Chase uh, just looking at the screen uh, reading, and people were able to tell by the English <laughs> that this wasn't me writing this. Whether it was them, whether it was a fan, whether it was a hater, we don't know. We can't be certain. But let me introduce you to something. You see, people who are highly intelligent, very ambitious, very ruthless, they're willing to do things that maybe you and I aren't willing to do. And you've observed that there's a lot of dishonesty in the entertainment space in general. So the question I would put before you is, if one wanted to make a connection with someone, make a contact or engage someone in conversation whom you don't have any background or connection with, this is an interesting way to do it. Because one thing we know for sure is that the fans will run with things. The fans will report back things and the trolls have an infinite amount of time. So the trolls are always going to get involved in metal and things and create drama and gossip. So that's for sure. So when you understand that as a constant within an equation, you can manipulate an equation to get certain outcomes. So the first question is, did they actually write this super chat? When I say they, I mean, Brian, in analyzing the nature of the two, Brian would certainly be the one to do it. I don't know if Chase is actually his co-host. As I said, I'm not very familiar with the podcast, um, but I thought he was. And he seems to be very much so hyped on Christianity. So in as much as that's the case, I don't think he would do something that's so Machiavellian. Uh, now, uh, talk to me. Okay, hey, we have Raptor Sports said, peace to the saints. I'm 23-year-old guy living in Bronx, New York. I really appreciate your outlook and how you carry yourself compared to others in RP. Currently going through a lot, including a breakup. Job pays $45 per hour. Do you think I still have time to be successful? Bruh, <laughs> these balls getting crazy. Listen to me. You said you're 23. Even if you were 43, you have plenty of time. And uh, understand that 23 is extraordinarily young. So I want to encourage you to be much more optimistic and realistic. It is realistic for you to be optimistic. You're 23 years old. That's quite young. $45 per hour. Is that a good income? I think for 23, yeah. Yeah, that's a decent income. And we know New York is expensive. I understand that. Going through a breakup, I highly recommend you check out a video. It's entitled How to Deal with a Breakup. You can find it at patreon.com slash the saint and the sinner. One of the quick tips I can give you is to be around good people. Um, if you're currently a member at patreon.com slash the saint and the sinner, we do have the New York section. Uh, Justin is the executive there. I encourage you to get together with those men have some workouts, maybe go talk to some young ladies, enjoy life. We as men often don't engage friendship enough. And then us as a society, we don't engage family enough. Okay, we have Major Mind and Soul said, either it's malice or, or incompetence. Either way, it's no bueno. Peace to the saints. Peace to the saints. That's a good point. We have Will came in with $100. Baller alert. It said, peace to the saints. You giving these frauds crazy work, big bro. Salute. In a real way, I appreciate you. And you know, the funny thing is, that's the era that we're in. It's hashtag me too. Or in this case, I'd say hashtag you too, right? Hashtag you too. What do I mean? When I tell these guys, like, you're a fake. You're a scammer. You're a liar. Then what do they do? They turn around. You're fake. You're. I'm like, oh, God, here we go. Just imagine the blue haired booty bandit and shout out to Mo Lestiny because his life is crumbling right now. He's lost his woman. He's getting divorced. He's being exposed. He's went viral for being a loser. It's a beautiful thing. I love to see it. And when I pointed out to him that he was an NFT scammer, first thing he does turns around, tries to call me a scammer, but he has a larger audience. Why? Because there's more nerds than there are winners. 
What I do is I do content for the elite. I do content for the leadership class, those men who seek to be great men, not to claim that they're a beast, not to claim that they're a savage, not to claim that they're an alpha male, but really to be the apex predator where there's no questioning, where it's very clear. Wow, that's a top guy right there. I'm going to read this. I also read one. It is now $15 and up to have it read out loud, but I'm just going to go ahead and read this one before I make that announcement. All right. We have Xavier said, peace to the saints. I have two younger half brothers, both 12, both with single mothers. Wow. My influence has been less than ideal. Would you recommend I buy them Bosch University with no context or are they too young? 12 years old. Let me ponder on that for, give me 10 seconds real quick. This is what I would recommend you do. Rather than buy each of those young men Boss University, I don't know if you already have it, but if you already have it, then I give you my permission to take each of them through it so that you can break down the content so that they can understand it. I really believe that deeply that Boss University will provide a foundational understanding of the self such that you can self-improve. I care enough about those young men that I offer it to them free if you already have it. If you don't have it, you go ahead and get it buy it just one time. All three of you can use it and you should have them go through, but also go through the lessons with them. And it bears repeating. Okay. We have Federico said and you drop that link for them for Boston University. Once you finish, we have Federico said you are doing Lord's work, annihilating all these fake men like Madam 22 and BB MLD. You know, speaking of BB MLD and fakeness, I tell you what's truly comical. You have so few men who are actually men nowadays. For example, observe uh, DJ Fatademics, Livingston. This boy is so insecure. You never see him without a hat. It's like the hat is glued to his head. You see him in his own home wearing a hat. It's like, who's wearing a hat indoors at their own home and you don't own that brand? It's very strange. Well, it's unconfidence. He's, he doesn't have confidence. He's embarrassed about his hair. Really, he should be embarrassed about that fat face of his. But moreover, then you look at Adolf 22 and th these guys are like Colombian whores. Consider how strange it is. And if you saw my thumbnail, you saw Adolf 22 when he was a bald bassa. Ugly fellow. Really ugly. When you have an, a face that ugly, you need some hair. And he was bald. So he's legally bald. And what did he do? He went and acted like a Colombian whore and got hair implants. Yeah, he paid for a hair transplant. And then when he couldn't think of anything to go against my logical argumentative points, when he was outmatched intellectually by a black god... Then what he had to do was resort to, you bald head, you bald head, your hair look like a milk dud. I was like, bruh, this is not the third grade. I'm not your substitute teacher. This is the corniest, most childish insult I've ever heard. And truthfully, I didn't get made fun of enough when I was a child. I, I like laughing. And if you could get off something good on me, I'm going to laugh with you. But that was terrible. But it's like, bruh, you're trying to make fun of me for a condition that you have. That's called projection. That's called psychological projection. Okay. We have Gamer Games that I came from whatever podcast. You are another real truth teller. So for all of you that came, I be sure to it. subscribe and turn on notifications so you can be notified about when Marquette does go live. Absolutely. And we talk about many topics, but our core topics are wealth and relationships. You know, how do you start a business, product-based business? Uh, how do you make more money? Uh, how do you invest money? How do you save money? Um, how do you get women? How do you exercise influence over your lady once you have her? How do you retain her? How do you know which one is not the right one? We do a lot of live sessions on those things. And I'm telling you from an expert opinion. I'm not telling you about things I'm guessing about. I'm not telling you from a book that I read. I'm telling you because I'm the guy. On Cash Up, we have Marcos said, peace to the saints, tuition for bringing order to the internet. I, <laughs> you heard me in a real way. Sad or nothing. We have Sir Tice said, peace to the saint. Peace to the saints. We have Saint CB says peace to the saints. Peace to the saints. Melvin on Cash App said peace to the saints. Deeply appreciate your time and knowledge. I really do. That means a lot to me. So thank you. And Oscar sent tuition on Cash App. Shout out to Oscar. We have Rakeley Swimming sent $50. Baller alert. He said, I knew the podcast would be a masterclass by you. The girls have never seen a winner and players am up so close. Never. Honeys were entranced. In a real way. Pink just wanted a man to put her anxiety to rest. She loved me. She was on the go the rest of the night. Ha. The Marquette, a.k.a. Warquette, peace to the saints. Peace to the saints. 
We have MT said, having watched Brian stumble through nearly every episode, I feel he's too incompetent to set up anything like that. And he has had Daily Wire staff on and last week mentioned Charlie Kirk being on this week. You killed it. Thank you. I appreciate that. See, one thing you want to understand is if someone is a genius, they're not a genius in every area, right? If someone is a, a, a bumbling fool, they might not be a bumbling fool in every area. This is precisely why we shouldn't trust Bill Gates, a software guy, to try to decide on how we manage the climate crisis. This is precisely why we might not trust Elon Musk, a software guy, to give good speeches. He stammers through. It's kind of painful to listen to. He has genius in one area and might be incompetent or average or even below average in another area. The same is true uh, with Chase, just like all of us. And so whereas he might not excel in certain things, he might have to copycat something or he might have to emulate someone who does it better or he might have a, an area of competence that we can see. Some people have areas of competence that are not you know, so well suited for the camera, which is to say we know Fresh is a great networker and his networking skills have made it a strong podcast. And he's also very diplomatic as well. Chase, uh, clearly he's a good organizer and he's good at arranging things. He used to do a prank show, right? Which means you have to hire actors and actresses, which is to say professional pretenders. You have to be able to bring in models, figure out eye candy, understand human psychology. So he's good at premeditation. Huh? What are pranks except premeditation and planning? This is his area of strength. So to suggest that he is not good at that would not be a meaningful observation of his character. And when you understand those who are highly intelligent and you've spent significant amounts of time around such persons, you know that really nothing is beyond imagining. Uh, I know this. I remember distinctly the radical transition in the intellectual environment when I left poverty and I went into the University of California, Berkeley. I was like, ah, the people around here are sharp. There's some sharks in this water, but some of them don't look like sharks. Then when I went into corporate and I was really earning well and I was traveling around the world, top spots, Dubai, Monaco, wherever you want to be, you'd see me there. I started noticing, oh, these people are sharp. They're nothing to play with. They don't end up at the top for no reason. Not everyone's a slick talker and a smooth walker, but they're all sharp thinkers. So no, I, I don't put it past anyone. I, I certainly would not uh, assume that a successful man is a fool. Uh, furthermore, uh, it would make more sense that we might assume that an athlete, say like a LeBron James, is a fool, right? He's good at bouncing a ball. His talents are up the body. So why would we then have him opening a school? That wouldn't make much sense. But still, we let that happen. So there you go. Now, so let's hear, um, continue on this one. So clearly, according to the English, all of my viewers knew that's not Marquette. Marquette uh, is, tends to be a bit more thoughtful and uh, probably proofreads things before he sends it in. So that wasn't him. And also, it's not quite my taste in uh, podcasts. So that, that made sense. I'm not saying I would never tune in if they had someone interesting, that plenty of smart people, good looking women, but I'm not big into watching these, uh, these kinds of things. Black into, oh my. God. The black individuals are less. Uh, Tiffany, do you want to address this? Well, I never a, said wait, they were this less untrustworthy or capable. Wait, I just said that. Is this the saint and the sinner? Go ahead. Sorry, Tiffany. What did you say? I said so clearly Chase as well is aware of me because he doesn't seem to be surprised when uh, the gentleman says the saint in the center. So there's no reaction to that. And then you have the, the dimwitted girl wearing a Junker hat, which she has no clue what the Junkers are, what Prussia is, uh, no idea on the history of that. She's just a dim-witted broad uh, with an arm tattoo, right? We can't expect much from her, but she, here she is sharing her theories on race. Amazing. What can you do? Let's say. Let's say. Christ. Are you basing this on personal experience or crime statistics? Jeez. Crime statistics. Okay. Yeah. What crime statistics are you basing this on? I guess just violence. Is this more like gun shooting? Is so. He's clearly leading her, so Chase presumably has an agenda because he's leading her thinking, which is not typically what you would do on an interview or discussion show. Um, so he gave her a dichotomy, and she selected from the dichotomy, so he's leading her thinking. And as much as that's the case, we can assume that he has perhaps a bias or an opinion on this, which is fine. And then you have the Asian girl who's within an ethnic group that has positive stereotypes for intellect, uh, which is ironic because just you know maybe 60 years ago they had negative stereotypes for their intellect, but now they've risen to the spotlight and people say, you know, Asians are smart. I don't in my observation, I haven't observed that any particular race has greater intellectual gifts, but certainly Asians are diligent and their culture is still strong. Families are good. I actually did a research uh, piece on this in graduate school, uh, particularly on the study habits of Asians 
outside of the academic environment within the home. That's where it counts. But anyways, I say that to say this. It's ironic that you have a dim-witted Asian. It's like, damn, we found the dumb Asian. Here she is. <laughs> Let's study her. So we found the dumb Asian who speaks slowly, which is a representation at the speed of which her mind moves. And here she is downing the blats, which I can't entirely get mad at. But one of the reasons I'm sure my followers probably knew that wasn't me is because you'll never see me stepping out to defend really anyone. It's sassin or nothing. You could be black, blue, white, orange, purple. If you're not a saint, ah, I'm not standing up for you. Because as I say, be good to good people. I don't know you to be a good person. We might be alike in skin, but that doesn't make us kin. There are black people whose behaviors and thinking I don't agree with at all, i.e. Lil Nas X and many more. So for that reason, this is not something that I would do. It doesn't make sense for my personality or belief system. Okay, we have Marquise said, peace to the saints, excited for the master communicator course, truly looking forward to it. Indeed. And if you observe people's thought patterns, their ability to orate, their interpersonal communication, their ability to interpret others and then respond accordingly, there's no peer. I am peerless in this regard, whether you're looking on YouTube or elsewhere. MT came right back and said, point taken, he does obviously have strengths. Oh, yeah, absolutely. There's no doubt about that percent of the population is responsible for 50 percent of the violent crime so there's the funny thing he basically used this uh dumb asian broad as a foil which is to say he used her to basically push forward his opinion uh through her dumb mouth because he's the one he said well was it this or was it crime statistics and then he says oh well here's a crime statistic ah thank you anyways let's hear if there's any more to this yeah real I think it, now it's 14% Nowadays and 62%. Nowadays you say a statistic okay. about a race and your races. That's crazy. What'd you say? And this is the kind of girl, she just wants to be cool. She wants to be liked. She wants to be accepted. Accepted by whom? Her own culture? Absolutely not. By the whites. And this is very common among uh, the Asians. When you observe the various levels of self-hatred, which you can see in all the racial categories, racial and ethnic categories, the Asians, they, they want to be white. That's kind of their go-to. You very rarely find Asians that want like want, want to be black, as some would say, or more accurately, in some cases, would adopt uh, the culture of the foundational black American. You might find some Asians in uh, Hayward. Shout out to the Haystack. You dig? Some people might accuse the Filipinos of such. But consistently, you'll find that the Asians, they want to be you know white Westerners. Um, and the one thing they don't want to be is what they are. And one thing I teach all peoples is to be yourself. What'd you like say? Like a yeah. statistic is racist. Yeah. That's, that's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. She's very inarticulate and clearly not very bright. You can probably get a sense of this from her nails. Uh, I've created a theorem. You know, it's a theorem where you calculate the number of centimeters, uh, uh, from which a woman's nails uh, protrude from her finger and you can tell how crazy or dimwitted she is. Yes, that is to say ghetto idiotic broads have, you know, extravagant fingernail polish and long fingernails. Check it out. Uh, the I think movement. this is Marquette. He's a YouTuber. Um, yo, what's up, man? I like your stuff. If so again, you don't see a reaction from Chase, so clearly he's familiar as well. Uh, the gentleman mispronounces my name, which is not something that... Obviously, I appreciate or respect, but it's something fairly common, uh, mostly among white Americans. It, you go to Europe, white Europeans, they never mispronounce the name. Black Americans, they never mispronounce the name. Pretty much everyone else, you tell them and they will get it. But for some sake reason, white Americans, they screw it up. Mostly males. The females, they, they'll get it 40% of the time. Um, so this is to be expected. It happens. Uh, why you would tell someone your name or someone would hear it pronounced and then they would pronounce it differently their own way, like they invented the name. I don't know. But such is human nature. So anyways, he's pronouncing my name, uh, referencing my channel. He's obviously familiar. This is a good thing. This is a positive thing. And shout out to him. Um, so this is how I became the show. I'd love to have you on. YouTuber. Um, yo, what's up, man? I like your stuff. If you ever want to be on the show, I'd love to have you on. If that is actually Wait, uh, is the saint and the sinner, Mark, his name's Marquette. Uh, yeah, man. Would love to have you on. Uh, shoot me a DM on Instagram at whatever uh, if you're down to come what on. What content does he make? So uh, I don't know why they let her talk so much. I feel like if you're going to be talking that much, you need to be better looking and smarter, at least in my opinion. That's maybe why I can't do the dating podcast like that. But anyways, uh, so that was the first time that they mentioned me or acknowledged that they're familiar with me publicly. As a result, my folks in the Discord were like, hey, uh, I don't think that was Marquette. And then someone you know, shared that with me. I looked at the timestamp. I was like, that was certainly not me. I reached out via IG, I said, hey, heads up. Ah, that was not me. I don't know who it was. It wasn't me. He said, okay, fantastic. I understand. But are you interested in coming on? I said, I'd be willing to work that out. We picked a date and he said, hey, I'd like you to come on to a dating podcast. It'll be you and seven females. I said, okay, fantastic. That's right up my alley. I can manage that. 
there were a number of uh, times we went back and forth, things that made me question his business acumen and uh, integrity. Eh, no disrespect to him, just in full transparency. And I understand that I came from like perhaps a more formal business background. And so when you're in entertainment, you're dealing with people who are young or people who have only been in podcasting and not been in corporate, then there are certain corporate culture that they're not privy to. So in as much as that's the case, um, you know, we, we eventually got things uh, done. He had asked me if I wanted to come on another panel that they were doing with fat women. I said, no, I, I really don't like to be surrounded by fat women or fat people. I, I don't like obesity at all. And that'd be unpleasant. I like to surround myself in uh, beauty and prosperity, and ideally both, but at least one of them. And so in as much as that's the case, um, I, I declined that opportunity. Uh, we had a, an agreement, myself, seven girls, no one else. And um, I financed the entire thing, right? So I financed my own flight ticket. I financed my stay at the uh, the best uh, villa that they had at the Ritz-Carlton. And um, of course, my ground transportation and then a return flight, right? So uh, one, it's opportunity cost, costing me time, other things I could be doing. And then it's the expense of going out there, right? So there, it's an investment. And more importantly, when I was trying to see if there was a private or semi-private option to get out there, I didn't see one for Santa Barbara. And maybe there are. I haven't been to Santa Barbara since I was in university. But anyway, so I flew out commercial. As a result, you can't take any tools with you that you might need. Not that it really crossed my mind, but generally I, I like to bring them along. You never know if you might have to fix someone's attitude with a tool. Okay. We have Darius said, watch out for Warquette, the classic story of Adam and Eve. <laughs> On Cash Shop, we have Brandon sent tuition, said peace to the saints. Peace to the saints. And Perry said peace to the saints. Seeing the assassin expand is great to see. It's a beautiful thing. And honestly, even, you know, these devils, I've been able to actually utilize these devils and monetize haters. I mean, that's really quite a trick, isn't it? So I've monetized haters and I've caused the devils to actually do good, which is to say that these demons are, it's free promotion and they're bringing people to something that's really positive. And for those of you who are new, once you spend some time around here, you get to know the people and you see the things that we really do in real life. You'll be like, wow, this is a good group of people, something that will enhance my life, my quality of life. Mike did come in with an additional. I saw part. that. Go ahead. He said, I would love to see a lecture on your college thesis about domestic habitats of Asians. As a father of three, this would help me and other saints that have families tremendously. Greatly appreciate it. Well, I'll give you the summary of it. It really was basically pointing out the number of hours. There were two hour counts that were critically important. The number of hours spent together in family, particularly during mealtime. And then secondly, the number of hours in independent study that was not required by the school. So uh, study hours that are not working on school required assignments, meaning the parents have assigned you to study something or to do something in ac uh, of an academic nature. Okay, on PayPal, we have Mohammed said, Marquette showcase, showcasing he is who he says he is, authentic and a real G. He ain't never lied about the internet being the revenge of the nerds. Look mm. at all these YouTubers, true nerds. True nerds. And <laughs> on Cash App, we have Joshua sent tuition. Shout out to Joshua. I'm sorry, I just opened up an email. Sorry about that. Carrying on. So I think this might be the last of what he said there, and then I'll, I'll carry on. Uh, he does. He, he does some live shows, like live podcasting and... Yeah, so she's asking him about what does he do, and so he's saying, yeah, he talks about you know some dating, some business, things like that. Okay, cool. So there, that's when he uh, says, and, and I'll play it. I'll let you hear from his words. About dating and relationships. How many, how many followers or subscribers? But why? You, I think he's got like, I don't know. There's like gold diggers, and then there's follow diggers like Tiffany. <laughs> Yo, wait, Marquette, would you, could no. I set you up with Tiffany? Fuck. <laughs> she hasn't what? heard his follow count yet brian <laughs> i think it's over 100k so yeah all right and i think Is let me just double check now i don't know if this girl's an only fans girl but I, I wouldn't be surprised because as i said she seems like a dumb asian and th there's certain things that are just like not attractive like being a dumb asian being an unathletic black person uh being an unemployed white person they're just things that it just doesn't really make sense and it speaks poorly of you like if you're an unemployed white person if you're an unathletic black person if you're a dumb asian or a fat asian then it's like come on god damn it like be useful you know you know utilize some of those positive stereotypes keep those things going i mean don't disappoint the people right anyways so there you go um I've explained to you how I became familiar with them and then how they uh, show to the public that they're familiar with me. And then we had that conversation uh, via Instagram DM to set up the uh, the trip. 
my team got everything booked and paid for. Uh, then I uh, flew out to Santa Barbara and uh, I was able to check into the Ritz Carlton early and you know, very kind staff over there. Shout out to them. They did a great job. Very pleased with my experience and my stay. And, uh, you know, I unpacked, turned on the fireplace, relaxed a little bit, sat outside, looked at the ocean. It was quite a pleasant day. Honestly, everyone was so friendly and lovely, uh, very complimentary. A lot of women complimenting my suit. And so it was a good day up until that point. And then I was uh, about to uh, call a car to take me over to the podcast. And then I got a text, uh, excuse me, a DM like, hey, here, share this link with your followers. This is the link for the live session. And then I, I get the link and I hit it to, you know, just see what the thumbnail was. And the link says Adam 22 question mark returns and then blah, 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 blah. At that point, I think, huh, that's curious. So I messaged them. I'm not one to jump to conclusions. You know, I'm an honorable man. And so I, I generally presume the best of people unless they show me otherwise. And so I just go ahead and ask him, uh, hey, is this going to be myself, you, Brian, uh, seven chicks, and then Adam 22 question mark? And then they reply, yes. And I said, uh-huh, isn't that curious? And then I tell my team, I say, hey, get a load of this. They say, oh, that's interesting. I say, yeah, it is. So anyways, um, me, if I have a beef with someone and I've stated that it's a beef, then for me, it's a beef. I'm not, I don't play games. I don't lie. I'm not going to pretend to be someone I am not. I'm not going to huff and puff. I'm really going to get it in. So in as much as that's the case, I told my team, hey, uh, well, for me, when I pull up, I'm going to ask for that fade. If he wants that fade, I'm going to take that fade. And then, you know, we're going to have to do some things to extract me from Santa Barbara. Um, you know, presuming I'm able to escape after I've like laid him out on that concrete. If he de declines the fade, I'm not a bully, I'm not a bully. So if he declines the fade, then we'll proceed with the show. But I just want to give you all a heads up. This is what is going to proceed. Team's like, all right, fantastic. So anyways, um, I was actually on a call when I pulled up to the podcast. There's a, a bunch of women outside and there's two white guys and then a tall white guy, Adolf 22. I proceed to get out of the car. I set down my briefcase, walk straight up to him and I say, what about that fade though? You need that fade? And he looks at me and he's like, oh, uh, no, 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 it's just content. I say, no, are you sure you don't need that fade though? Because we can get that fade right here, right now. He's like, no, 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 it's just content. Yeah, man, it's just content. Dapping me up like he's a black guy. I was like, okay, must be love. <laughs> I didn't realize it's all love. It's all content. See, now that's one thing I always tell people is like, I don't do that. If I if it's content, it'll be very clear that, hey, it's content. I'll even say out loud, I don't have beef with this person. Like, for example, I would say, I don't have any beef with the Tate brothers. I have no beef with them. They've never done anything wrong to me. I don't have any beef with them. That's content. Um, if I say that, you know, if I start getting disrespectful and I tell you, you know, I'll do X, Y, and Z, I actually mean every bit of that. So anyways, then we uh, proceed into the uh, show. But the first question is this. When Adolf 22 saw me, why wasn't he so shocked and surprised? He must have received a heads up. And so this is what I think was done to him. And I think it's quite crafty. Number one, I think that he was, he's always looking to promote himself and go viral and be in the news, the headlines. So in as much as that's the case, um, he wanted to go and do some more media because whatever podcast, they have 4.2 million or 4. Point however many million subscribers. So it's a good platform for him to go on. So he arranges with Brian to come on and Brian recruited him. And I'll tell you why we know that to be the case. It's my other cell phone around here. I'd actually ask Rolo if he minds me uh, sharing a discussion that we had. I want to see what he said back. So before this even happened, let me rewind you a little bit. So 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 walk with me here. I got a number of pieces of critical information to to share with you. Before any of this happened, right? Because we had booked me, Marquette Devon Burton, the saint and the sinner, to be alone on a dating podcast with Seven Shakes and Brian, which I would do very well. It'd be plenty entertaining. Um, and there'd be a lot of game and ism, and there'd be time to, you know, hear some good ideas, some new ideas, in fact. Uh, so we had arranged that long before that. Then I had posted a, a live session that said, uh, Rolo Tomasi debate invitation, debate invitation. So it seems like there's some smoke, right? Now, here's the thing that many people obviously didn't know. Rolo and I have communicated many times. I have respect for Rolo's mind. 
He seems to be one of the more articulate, thoughtful persons in the space. And in as much as that's the case, I could speak to him more so on a peer level than many of these other intellectual runts who know nothing and probably just are repeating things he said or things I said. So in as much as that's the case, Rolo and I have talked before. We've had a lot of private cumber, uh, private uh, dialogues via DM. And so when that post went up, I, I said, hey, Rolo, you know, I don't want to debate you. I don't want to try to embarrass you or anything like that. Of course, you know, I consider ourselves uh, collegial. And so, you know, let's have a conversation. It'll be more of an interview. You know, that's going to get people to click on it. He says, yeah, fantastic. Absolutely. And you can observe that. You can observe conversations I've had with CGA, conversations I've had with Rolo. You can see that there's a mutual respect there. And other persons that I've interviewed, there's respect. The only time I steamroll someone is if I actually consider them to be evil which is to say that they are poisonous, spreading corruption among the youth. The example that they provide is dangerous. And when that is the case, I do precisely what a, an upright man should do in the presence of evil. Eradicate it. <laughs> yeah, eradicate it. And I'll tell you why. Because for too long, good men have stood by and allowed this country to go down the tubes. I'm not with it. Hmm? Go ahead. We're going to get into this. We have Lord Commander said this modern generation thinks money absolves them of Ooh. critique and being Ooh. held to a man's standard. Yes. Manhood can't be bought. Respect can't be bought. Yes. Adam trying to pull the money card showed how weak he that was. was. Peace to the on, saints. Keep that on screen. Here's the funny thing, Lord. Uh, number one, lames don't realize money does not unlame a lame. You're still a loser. Number one. And here's the funnier thing. I can still smash your bitch. And in Adam's case, I think everyone could, as long as you're a big black guy, of which there are many big black guys, apparently. You hear me? So anyone can smash his girl, but I could do it without the money. You hear me? And I don't need to be a porn star. You're, she just going to let a thug get up in her rib. You dig? I don't want to be your man. I want to be your N-I-G-G-A. Anyways, carrying on. So that's number one. Money's not going to make you not a lame if you're a lame. Number two. It was a red herring. It was a distraction. It was a very feminine piece of sign language, which is to say he was being obliterated intellectually. And instead of competing in that arena, he resorted to ad hominem attacks. He resorted to, you know, any money, which is amazing. I think I'm going to just go with it. I think I'm going to just go with it, honestly. But I got to probably stop wearing custom handmade clothes every day. I have to stop doing that. I also have to stop being the only person that doesn't shoot my YouTube content in my house. I actually am probably the only person that shoots it in a completely separate studio. Probably, probably got to stop doing that and also stop buying cars. Anyways, um, point is this, um, for the record though, I, I would like to be known as a humble spiritual teacher. Uh, no, seriously. I want to be known as a humble spiritual teacher. You are. Okay, good. Seem like you're laughing for a second. Anyways, point is this. He starts talking about money. We weren't talking about money, dummy. We're talking about your wife being a slore. That's what we're talking about. That's the current topic. Is your wife a slore? And why are you lying about being comfortable with it? That was a topic. And then that's when he brings up money. So notice every time, I want you guys to pay attention. When people get pressed with the sword of truth, they become evasive and distract. And in his case, he hit the track. That man was running. But the real question, and we're going to have to go backwards, is number one, how can uh, how can we explain uh, with regards to Rolo's story how Brian has tried to set people up before? Number one, and then number two, let's take a look at the previous content that shows that there was clearly very serious smoke between Adolf Twenty Two and the Great Marquette Devon Burton, also known as the Crown Prince of Iran. Okay, we have Dimitri said, peace to the saints. Is there an appropriate time for a man to express his love and even say, I love you to his woman? Or I always keep a certain distance and keep a player to not appear weak. You know, loving someone doesn't make you appear weak, but being uh, ex too soft of a person shows that you're a soft person. And generally you would get abused. And as far as women go, they're not noble. So they don't really respect weakness. So number one, here's a good rule for you. Don't be the first to say, I love you. Don't do that, even if you feel it. Go ahead and wait for her to say that. After that, you should be able to say it as you feel it. Now, the truth is, when you become a hard man, a strong man, and a focused man, you're not going to be feeling super lovey-dovey. You're going to feel more focused. You're going to feel more sharp, more goal-oriented. And you should know that a woman doesn't ever want to be the center of your life. She wants to be right next to the center. The moment you make a woman the center of your life, she starts to feel as though you're clingy and she can see that you have no real purpose because you've made her your purpose when really a man should be focused on his goals, goals in the areas of health, 
wealth and relationships. And remember, wealth is usually at the top and relationships and health are used to bolster or buttress that greater goal of wealth. You use those two things to get you to that wealth goal faster. Okay, we have Rakeley swimming. Rakeley swimming is back. I said, "I'm telling you, Saint, something is off on Adam's success. How is he who he's supposed to be, and mm. he doesn't even consider that you could have followed him outside? Too thoughtless for his income." You know, there were a lot of things that could have happened, and truth be told, if any of those things would have happened, then I would have had big problems with the whatever podcast Brian as an individual. And, you know, we would have continued things with Adolf 22 and me, I prosecute the war to the wars over, you know, I'm the guy who salts the earth afterward. I want to scorch the earth. So, you know, it is uh, the good fortune of everyone involved that things went as they did, because I'm not the person who's going to be civil or back down or cooperate. No, I'm going to destroy stuff. So if when I walked up on him and I said, you want that fade? And he said, yes, I wouldn't have there, at that point. There's no more talking. You would have saw me pack him out right then and there. And I'm the kind of guy that I'm like a, a curb stomper. You hear me? I'm that kind of guy. Like every fade I've been in, it didn't stop because I was like, that's enough. That's not my personality. It's never enough. You hear me? And no one was there strong enough to pull me off of him. So he was smart to immediately fold like a lawn chair. Now, say he didn't fold like a lawn chair. I end up catching a case or, or something like that. Then my new enemy is Brian in the whatever podcast because they were the architect of that situation, undoubtedly. And you might say, Mark, well, how is that possible? We're going to go through it. One of the things I wanted to mention with regards to Rolo, and Rolo did send in a super chat last time I talked about this. I just wanted to reconfirm with him uh, if he's comfortable about me repeating it. But this is indeed in the public record. Um, when I had posted that he and I were going to debate, Brian reached out to me and said, hey, um, I can host you and Rolo debating. Well, here's a funny thing about Brian. What he's really trying to do is gather all of the viewership, the clout, and the money for himself, the revenue. We would just be two clowns showing up to tap dance in his studio, and then he collects the pot of gold. That would be very strange, especially being that he has nothing to do with it, right? Like, you know, Rolo lives in Nevada. I live in Nevada. Like, why would we both go to California to do it in your podcast studio? That doesn't make any sense. Rolo has a studio. I have a studio. So that's not sensible, number one. Then number two, it's like, I don't have any previously previous dealings or friendship with you. So why would I want to hand over revenue to you for no good reason? And then thirdly, um, if I were to host it and then we had a good debate, good showing, and then after that Rolo hosted it, that would be equitable, right? We would take a you know, I'd retain my own revenue. He'd retain his revenue. But where Brian comes in, it doesn't quite make any sense. So he's basically saying, hey, hey, dummies, um, I'd like to bring both of you idiots over to my studio so you could do it on my podcast and I'll just sit back and listen and, and then collect the money at the end. I was like, whoa, like you must think I am a very dumb N word. Like I don't even like are N words that dumb. I feel like N words at least some, sometimes not to get their money together. Right. No comment. Yeah. Oh, right. That's a good point. That's a good point. Yeah. So I, I thought that was quite strange uh, to suggest that. And, you know, I've hadn't shook his hand or met him at that point. So I just said, no, we'll discuss at a later time. So anyways, um, then I was having a conversation with Rolo before our debate. And in that exchange with Rolo, he said, oh, yeah, um, Brian had reached out to me, Rolo, and invited me uh, to, you know, told me he could get us uh, to debate on his channel. I was like, whoa, that's fascinating because that was never cleared with me. He didn't get my permission. I didn't sign off on that. So was he speaking for me? And what is this backdoor deal he's doing? And if I've already listed it on my channel, so I'm supposed to like just cancel it on my channel, and just go do it on his channel. Like that's so, so peculiar. <laughs> I was like, huh, that's interesting. And so clearly from uh, Brian's calculations, he was like, okay, Marquette can be an explosive character. Rolo's a bright guy, very well respected in the red pill space. Marquette has his own lane. So you get these two guys together. It's going to be high level intellect, potentially explosive because you have Marquette who just gives zero Fs. So yeah, this is the thing to host. And I think Brian is sharp enough to see who's going to win. You see a lot of people, they're not smart enough to see things before they occur. See, that's the problem with the average person. See, an average person, there's really three categories of persons on earth. There's the person who doesn't know what's going on. They're looking around. They don't know what's going on. There's the person who could see what's going on. They can see what's going on today. Then there's the person who can see what will be going on. You know, the future. They can predict. They can understand what's occurring in the near term. 
that's the smartest person, right? The one who can forecast, the one who can anticipate such that they might be able to dominate. I say that to say, of course, Brian can uh, can see what's next. He can see the saint in the center. He's going to win. He might not put in the marketing dollar or the marketing effort or have like a clips channel and do all the clever editing. But when he says something, it's potent. It's very well spoken. He's very well dressed. He has a camera friendly face and he's going to eventually rise to the top. The cream always rises to the top and he's certainly elite in this space. And what's more, he's everything he says he is. So he's going to make it to the top by whatever means. I'd be smart to get this now and help be a part of that rise. It's good business. It's, it's wise. So that made sense. So we declined that. But what it showed me is that with him reaching to Rolo behind my back and not telling me about it, and he didn't tell Rolo he was reaching out to me, he tried to basically steal a deal from me uh, and do a backdoor deal that would wholly benefit him and really not anyone else because I was already going to go on his podcast and be exposed to his audience. So there you go. Now, that's one clear example of he likes to do backdoor deals. And secondly, that um, he likes to arrange explosive situations, which makes sense. He's a prankster. What are pranks about? Shock, awe, surprise. So this is in his wheelhouse. Hey, on PayPal, we have David sent $50. Baller alert. He says, tuition and thank you for some specific humorous moments. One, yeah. Little House on the Prairie. And shout out to David for knowing what that's about. Two, Captain Stinky reporting for duty. Three, poor girl that did not understand the difference between flying and driving and crazy. all that entails. So Putting sad. in that work, peace to the saints. Peace to the saints. And for those of you who didn't understand, because I'm sure there's some persons here who might not understand, when you fly, especially when you're flying into uh, California, there you cannot take in certain material. Uh, you can, even if you have a concealed carry permit in Nevada, you can't go into California with that. Whereas conversely, um, you can have a Nevada concealed carry permit. There's reciprocity. You can get a concealed carry permit in Florida. So for example, if I were to go into South Florida, you might see me with the UWAP. So you better be careful. And truth be told, I don't do fair fades. I'm not trying to like knuckle up with anybody. If I don't personally know you, there's no fade. So let me just leave it at that. Now, that being the case, if I flew commercial into California, I'm out there, you know, with nothing. So you basically create a situation where you've invited an open enemy and I'm going to play you the videos that I know he had to have seen or heard about that shows how everyone, the whole Internet knew we were open enemies. Um, and so you got me in a situation where I flew. So we know for sure I don't have a weapon on me. And he drove, so in all likelihood, he should have a weapon on him. Like, I'd be surprised, shocked, and disappointed if he didn't. He absolutely should have had one on him. And certainly the second that he knew I was going to be in the building, he should have, because I'm with the shits, and it's well documented. I got a whole book called The Black Box. You can read about my life. Okay, on Cash Up, Mr. Thompson said, what would you do if you had a young child behaving in sexually deviant ways? I hope you're asking for a friend. Honestly, the first thing that I would do is as a mother and father, I would sit down with a child on a, a number of occasions and try to pull that truth out of them. You know, what was their experience? What happened? And this is different for, from the male and the female child as uh, despite popular belief. The female child uh, may experience certain levels of stimulation earlier than the male child. You know, the male child, you know, has to wait to a certain season to even be able to sustain an erection. So first, I'd want to make sure that the child has not been tampered with, if you will. And many children have, unfortunately. So that's number one. Have those conversations with the child over a, a number of days together with your spouse, you alone, then the other spouse alone of the different gender and figure out if that's an issue. Then secondly, I would explain to them like, hey, this is not appropriate. Don't do this. Dad doesn't do this. Mom doesn't do this. And then I would also be thoughtful about the other kids that they're around and what those experiences are. And I would ask about that. And I'm wishing you much success in this because no one needs to make proof of their virility before the proper season. Okay. We have Christian just joined Patreon. Shout out to Christian. We welcome you to this thing of ours. Hedmonia says, oh, sent $50. Caller alert. It says, peace and blessings to you, Marquette. Glad to see you taking down men possessed by selfish, carnal desires efficiently. Yes. Let these younglings, youngings come in, know, coming in know what an example of being soulless looks like. And you know, one thing I need to point out is that when I was there in person looking at Adam 22's eyes, when he would look at me, he was 
know, mostly averting his eyes, you know, showing submission, looking ground, looking down at the ground or looking off into space. He's scared. I've seen fear before. But looking into his eyes, you can see that there's no soul there. You can see that he's clearly used drugs. You'll observe it in his fidgety, nervous behavior and his excessive blinking. And part of it, he's had the upper bluff surgery to remove the uh, upper eyelid, reduce it when it starts to hang down with age as he's 40. So he's had that surgery. And so like his eyelids look a bit funny, but he's just blinking a lot and just being really jittery. So he, he's a drug addict, essentially, is what he is. He's a drug addict. And it was very clear, abundantly clear, which is another reason he should not ever consider throwing hands. And he honestly made the very smartest decision that he could have made in that circumstance. Hey, we have Trey, the maker, said Adolf 22 is like Ronald McDonald. They <laughs> both have money, but they are still clowns. Ah, love it. Stealing it. Mamba's office sent $50. Baller alert. Said Brian from whatever podcast really did some traditional white man exploitation-esque moves. All for what? Views? Maybe I'm missing something. These new age entertainers chase views like they're diamonds. Is a view worth that much? Well, really, you know, is it worth your life? Because <laughs> that's what it could have come to. And the and I think people are starting to slowly realize, like, oh, like this guy's different. Like, let's stop playing with this guy. He doesn't play. He doesn't play nice. And I don't. Um, and I don't feel guilty either. Like I think people are like, you were mean for sure. I'm not a nice person. I'm a kind man, but I am not a nice person. And I believe in be good to good people. If I don't consider you a good person, yeah. <laughs> yeah, get hit by a bus. I'm not calling 911. Continue moseying down the street. That's just me, though. But anyways, uh, you bring up a good point, and this is what is dominating on the internet, and it must be eradicated. It will not remove itself naturally. This is uh, John Perka, you know, the, the other drug addict. You know, he's a, engaging all these play fights and things like this. This is what happens when you have a generation of people who are naturally going to become a nerd because they're incompetent physically and unattractive. Then you also have people who are conditioned into being a nerd because they've come up in a generation with single moms raised by an iPad, spending excessive numbers of hours, isolated, playing video games in a fake virtual world. And this is precisely why the thinking of an Adolf 22, also known as Cuck 22, makes sense to them when he says things like, oh, my wife is not a slore. We're monogamous because when she has sex with other men, BBCs, we turn on the camera and then we're in an alternate universe and it doesn't count i was like oh that's amazing because i guess if i punch your ass out on camera the police aren't gonna arrest me because the camera was filming which means it didn't really happen right silliness thank you now so let's go on to um i'm gonna do a little search on my youtube channel and i'm just gonna type in uh adam 22 and i want to show you uh an early clip this one is called how did beef with adam 22 begin Let's see if this one might instruct us on something. You see the first DM coming from Adam22 says, yo, with the praying hands emoji, I respond, hey, Adam, thanks a lot for allowing me on your platform. Then he responds, let's do it when you're in LA. So he says, let's do it when you're in LA. All of a sudden, DJ Academics gets emotional. And so he starts attacking, not me, because he's scared to do that. So he starts attacking no jumpers. Yeah, they, they start folding like lawn chairs, turning on their own mans. DJ Academics said, your wife's a cold floor, man. You asked me to pop her off with you, man. Use a dirt bag. She's a dirt bag. Adam don't want war with me. That's facts. Adam was begging me for begging me to fuck his bitch, nigga. That's his wife now. DJ Academic talking reckless. Slizzard off the henny. Did anybody say, look, man, act, use up. You better shut your mouth. They ain't say that. They actually did say it's, well, you know, this is Flacco's fault. And they pretend as though Adam was unaware that I was coming on the show. Highly improbable. Said himself, he stated himself that he did the timestamps before the video went up. Adam and the whole staff, they start dragging Flacco through the dirt, but then they have to turn around and try to drag me through the dirt to do what? To appease DJ Academics. Why? Because it's a money play. They don't want to upset their colleagues because they think it's going to hurt their money game. You have a satanic character when he follows money as a god. Mm. On the American banknote, it says, in God we trust. But he's Wait, trip on this, saints. Trip on this. Did I have him read down to the T? This is a, how many years old is this video here? I think I was in uh, Jersey when I made this video, right? I was in Jersey. Yes, indeed. I remember this because yeah. I can tell by that yeah. background painting. I was in Jersey. High rise. It was a year ago. Yes. At, uh, about one year ago because yeah. it was, it was around Christmas, December, wasn't it? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So one year exactly. Yeah. Amazing.
So this was a year ago, and I said, money is his God. You have a soulless, godless, dirtbag, demon, wicked, evildoer. God has become his money. He knows no real God. Just he obeys money. Said this a year ago. Huh? And what did you see when I started obliterating him logically, intellectually, verbally? What did he do? He starts talking about money. Now, it's amazing, too, because I didn't want to go down that tangent with him. I, I held him to the point. Huh? That's smart. But what is the relevant? Like, one, it's off topic. But number two is like, talk that to a pauper. Like, talk that to an everyday person. Like, bro, like, get out of here. Like, everyone knows you're lying. And again, share my Instagram with them so they can see how bosses live. You dig? For a decade. For a decade, living like a boss. Before YouTube. Before you, thank you. Before YouTube, doing the things you can't pretend to do. Huh? Doing the things you can't fake. He is going to hurt their money game. You have a satanic character when he follows money as a god. Mm. On the American banknote, it says, in God we trust. But he's got it confused and he trusts money as his god. Obedient, faithful, following the money. How is it that you already have wealth? And then you still bend over backwards and do anything to gain an extra dollar when you're supposedly making mil a million every month. Uh -huh. Adam, there's some things you shouldn't do for the money. You initiated a conversation with me and you was all peace and peachy. If you had an issue with me as a real one, bro, you could have DM me and we could have got that off our chest, man. You could have got that off your chest while I was in your studio, little buddy. If you'd have pulled up on me. Hey, quite I got an issue with you. What? <laughs> Let's get it solved. Let's get it solved right now. Turn off the cameras. Fuck the interview. Get it solved right now. I'm in your house. So if you had an issue with me, why you ain't bring it up then? Then you wait till I'm clean out of state. And all of a sudden, you got some slick shit to say. So what I do? So as a real one, I hop back in them DMs. Well, let me just holler at him one-on-one. -on -one. We, we can probably get this solved. Ain't no, we ain't got to make no video. I shot him one back. I said, I don't know if you can see that. I said one-on-one, -on -one, early January. Yeah, I'll, I'll put it in my schedule. And we ain't even got to talk about it. We ain't got to make a video about it, nothing. We just going about our life. You would know who you are and I know who I am. Did he respond? Nah, he didn't respond to that. That's strange, Marquette. He was responding to everything else. Following you on Instagram presently, he initiated the conversation. He don't want the one-on-one. -on -one. Mm. 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 Now, who's real and who's fake? Who's real and who's fake? Those are the, the DM messages of him starting a conversation, acting like he's a normal good guy. Hey, Saint Center, I'm a fan of yours. Hey, you got to come back to No Jumper. I got to interview you myself. Oh, yeah, we're all nice and peachy. Huh? Then he goes on a podcast on No Jumper while DMing me saying, hey, we're friends, we're buddies. And this is, I didn't even reach out to him. He goes on with his gay buddy, Mo Lestiny, the blue-haired booty bandit, and his other white buddy, I can't remember that guy's name. You know, I'm talking about the one with the big nose. Big nose and a, a weird haircut. Looked like a lesbian from the 90s. But anyways, point is, so it's him and these two other white guys, one of which is an open homosexual. Uh, uh, Adolf 22 is a closeted homosexual. And, you know, they're all, you know, rubbing each other's meat, uh, figuratively speaking. And blue-haired booty bandit, I embarrassed him in a debate. And I embarrassed him so badly. I heard his, his fans. I heard his fans because I said, you got to stop guzzling Skittles. It, it's bad for your health. Stop guzzling Skittles. You got too much sugar in your tank. And my God, it hurt his feelings and his fans' feelings because a lot of them, they eat fruity pebbles for breakfast. They eat fruit roll-up snacks, fruit roll-ups, and fruit snacks for dinner. So they were mad. Anyways, point is this. He goes on dragging me through the dirt, and I was like, oh, that's really strange. You dragged me through the dirt after, like, basically DMing me, acting like a fan. So then I, I messaged him back. I was like, hey, bro, if you had an issue, like, why didn't you let me know when I was in your studio? I said, hey, I'm, I'm the kind of guy I deal with issues. I don't talk behind people's back. I don't. I don't go and babble on the internet. If you see me talking about someone on the internet, it's for a legitimate reason. They started it is usually the reason. They started it, and that's because they're stupid. You see, they looked at me, and they didn't see what's there. That's the problem. When you look at something and you don't understand what you're seeing. I did a live session earlier today when I was leaving the Ritz-Carlton. I was talking to a, uh, I was actually just live, and I was allowing people to come on and just chop it up. And uh, a buddy of mine who I've grown up with hopped on the line from my neighborhood. And you can read about him in the black box, Rod. So he hops on and he was like, bro, when, when, when you said you pulled up on him, like I could visualize it in my mind. Why could he visualize it? Because he's seen me pull up on people and beat the brakes off them in real life. I'm like that. 
he 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 knows I'm like that. He said, bro, they don't believe it. He's like, man, you might have to let me tell some stories. Oh, absolutely. But here's the thing. I don't change. My whole life, I've been the exact same way. I've never had a sip of alcohol. My whole life, I've been focused. Never picked up a cigarette. Never. I've been focused my whole life. Huh? I'm not like you nerds. Don't play with me. It'll end badly. And I won't regret it. And I'll deal with the consequences. Remember, I grew up, my father was in prison doing 10 years. My mom's been to prison. My grandma's been to prison. My grandfather's been to prison. My All of my uncles have been to prison. My aunts have been to prison. I'll do what I was raised to do to you. I have not changed my values. Don't play with me. We're not the same. None of you. Anyways, carry on. We have Cage sent $50. Shout out to Cage. He said, Mr. Burton, I am by no means a baller, but the ism is undeniable. Baller alert. But baller alert, though. Go ahead. He said, it was a pleasure to watch you go in and decimate that entire panel. Devastation. You, sir, are a champion. Fatality. You, sir. Fatality. You, sir. Fatality. Finish him. You, sir, are a champion among men and should not be slept on, but regaled and protected. Peace to the saints, Sasson or nothing. Peace to the saints, Sasson or nothing. He came right back, and you will read this one much better than we can. Okay. Let me see what we got here. Give me a second. Let me just switch uh, this screen. I'm going to mind. And it's on screen right now? Yeah. All right. Livingston! Shout out to DJ Fatademics. If you guys support the show, I'll carry on. DJ Fatademics did a reaction, but really it was just hating. Because, I look, I flamed DJ Fatademics so bad, so bad, that he stopped beefing with people like i ended dj academics inclination to beef with people check this out i'd said something about him that was accurate oh it hurts it hurts it hurts why the truth it hurts i said something about him that was accurate he got big mad and then made a video he thought he was roasting me then i made a video flamed everything bodied everything it hurt his feelings he got flamed so bad on his own comments people were like you shouldn't have mentioned the saint in the center this ain't gonna go well leave the saint in the center alone do you know who the saint in the center is then when i flamed him people were like the saint in the center bodied you hey i'm a fan but the saint center got him hey you better not respond to that then what dj academics do he did the exact same thing adolf 22 did the exact same thing man you ain't get, show me three million dollars in a bank account then i then i roast you then i make a video about you you ain't on my level show me three million dollars in a bank account and that's immediately when i knew he was broke i knew dj academics was broke because last time i went to the bank in europe the banker i saw said i want to introduce you to another banker we only insure up to three hundred thousand euro in this bank so you would have to go to another bank if you want your money insured it's like ah come on dj academics you're an idiot who would put three million dollars in a bank that's foolish. 300 million, or excuse me, $3 million in cash in a bank. That's literally dumb. But anyways, they'll say anything to get out of trouble. They'll say anything. Show me $3 million in the bank. Dang, word. That's the requirement now? I thought you've been flaming people for years for the free, for the low. Once I bodied you, then you're like, look, he does this. I don't want to play with him because there's nothing I can say to him. Yeah. Shocker. Shocker. Carry on. Now, here's another one. I'm just going to give you guys all the just a little piece of the content that was put out. You saw the first one I did about uh, Adolf 22. How did the beef start? Now, here's another one. And this one, I'd love to see the dates on this. I wish I could see the dates. But here's another one. Just to show you, like, the animosity between. For gas, he only invites the rappers. But you have an intelligent black man in the suit. All of a sudden, Adolf 22, he don't see you. He leaves it up to Flacco to invite the real one. What happened is no jumper interview happens like sooner. Like you, like you live in LA. I know, man. I didn't know. You know, Adam never hollered at me, man. I've been observing this man on the internet for a long time, but to be honest with you, it never really crossed oh. my mind. You never had to reek on because he's an intelligent black man. You never had to reek on because he the type to show up cooted and booted looking clean presentable and civilized same thing i did showed up looking clean suited and booted and civilized adam 22 only wants to invite on black gang members black pimps black street people he's forwarding all of this that makes a culture vulture rich he's forwarding all of the that makes a black man poor. when adam is and listen let that be a lesson to all yous, all yous, not just uh, the culture vultures like Adolf 22, but also the blacks. Let that be a lesson to them. Yeah, you're the one that watches this idiotic content. 
black gang members. Like, I grew up around black gang members. I damn sure don't want to watch them on YouTube. You heard me? Trying to avoid them. Low key, I got good friends of mine that are black gang members. I try to stay away from them, honestly. Yeah. All this goofiness. And you guys buy into this. And the irony that some like, a uh, weird ass white kid from what Massachusetts or something. I don't even know the boys from like some random ass place. A uh, random ass white kid from the Northeast is now in Los Angeles hanging out with LA gang members in like, that's normal to you. You don't see that he's exploiting them. Hell, they don't even see it. And shout out to, um, to AD and the other gentlemen who wised up and got up out of there and started their own podcast with, which they could have did much earlier. And truth be told, when I spoke on it, like a G way back, I think I was the spark that caused them to do that if we being real i was the one first one to call it out because everybody else was bootlicking house niggas and couldn't keep it real because they own his payroll huh yeah we have cold brew said peace to the saints you did exactly what you were supposed to do and what all men should do when confronted with the filth of adam 22 using your words like a sword peace to the saints peace to the saints a sword chopping heads off yeah pop that one up we have connie i want to read this one okay. connie johnson quality cmr I wish that photo was larger. Uh, and in fact, I like this super chat so much. Honestly, I really do. I like it so much that I would like to invite you on screen. So I'm doing something that, you know, we got a ton of people watching right now. And I hope everyone's clicked the like button. And if you'd like to know how authentic is Marquette Devon Burton, this person is clearly a hater. And I'm inviting them on screen to give them airtime because I would like to understand uh, maybe the origin of their hate, which they're wicked. They have they have a black soul. They're they're a demon on earth. But really, I would like to go through this this lie here because I love these lies. Uh, they're easy to disprove. And so since he's making a claim, he has to support his claim. So uh, I'm going to drop the... It's already dropped. Oh, you dropped the link for yep. him. Fantastic. And this is just for Connie and camera must be turned Precisely. on. Precisely. So Connie, just turn on your camera. We'll let you come on and then you can explain as you write a milk dud head. Why you would misspell a word, I don't know. But my advice to all peoples, uh, when you're writing, writing is a formal matter. You don't write the way you speak. It makes you look uneducated. So this imbecile writes a milk dud head, which again, also, I don't mind uh, if you insult me, if it's clever, you see, it needs to be clever. So for example, if you sent this in, it wasn't a super chat, I would have probably blocked you just because it wasn't funny. And I don't want to waste my time reading dumb things. Now, if you insulted me and it was hilarious, I would just let it slide. It's in a super chat. Here we are. I'm inviting you on. But I noticed consistently that people who think they don't like me, it's not that they don't like me. It's, like, it's that they don't like themselves. These are low income people, low IQ people. These are low self-esteem people. They hate themselves. They look at me, they see what they are not, and they feel intimidated, which is consistently why when we invite them on, they never click the link to join. And you're seeing that right now as we speak. But anyways, he writes, I have a question. Did you really make a fake website saying you're worth 200 M's? No, I would never do that. And in fact, that's why I'm inviting you on because I myself, I myself would like to see that website. And in fact, might even want to get it taken down. And I'll tell you why. One, I'm a humble spiritual teacher. So I have no money. I have no possessions and I have no money. I'm a humble spiritual teacher. That's number one. Number two, uh, people who do have money, which would be not inclusive of a humble spiritual teacher, but people who do have money, they really want to conceal their assets. They want to conceal their income. They want to stay away from certain alphabet agencies, which will remain nameless. Uh, those agencies that try to take money and give it to the government and then reallocate it in foolish ways. They want to conceal their assets from people who would like to sue them, people who are uh, money grubbing gold diggers, people who might marry you to take your fortune. So in as much as that's the case, um, I am a lowly spiritual teacher and i would like to invite you on because i'd like to check into this website and as indeed i am a technologist as you all know we can actually figure out who owns the website so is he ever going to come on i'm so. guessing not okay great you're a fake and a phony thank you very much and we do appreciate the support and for any uh hater and i actually am going to do a show dedicated to haters i'm gonna do two shows uh one show is going to be um about uh cryptocurrency and nfts so anyone who would like to prove that Marquette has done anything that was not uh, you know, upright regarding cryptocurrencies and NFTs, they can come on and I'll give them the time that they need to explain and show their evidence. And then the second show but I want to do. They won't because they, they won't, never do. Of course, because they're literally lying. And that's, mind you, if you live a life this good, you have to be proud. The only bad thing someone can say is a lie. That's amazing. Then the second show I want to do, since I'm a, spirit, a lowly spiritual teacher, I want to go through and I want to as the blats call it, they call it pocket watching. I want to watch Marquette's pockets. And so for the people who say that 
I'm impoverished. I would like them to come on and like show me the evidence. And then once they're finished doing that, they'll probably not come. Then let's just go through a, a quick look at Marquette's life and let's try to estimate the cost of certain activities we observe him doing. And I think that'll be fun. If, there used to be a, a game show. I think it's called Supermarket Sweep. You go through and you get, they say, hey, you need to get $200 worth of items and you want to go get the most expensive items in the grocery store. Oh, yeah. So we get to see if people know what things cost. So it'll be fun. Carrying on. Thank you for the support, Lord. Yes, indeed. Shout out to Commander. All caught up there? Yeah. Fantastic. So we just went through that second clip. So you can see that there's consistent content going out, inclusive of shorts um, and live sessions that are showing that there's clearly a, a, a rather serious beef. There's no love on either side. And let me give you all of them, and then we'll carry on with the conversation. And what I'm doing is uh, showing you that there is no room to have not known. Huh? Here we go. Here's another one. Did I play this one? Let's see. Your mama throw game is tremendous. Is your mama mixed with giraffe? Her neck is long. She bland hide the salami. The salami's gone. Oh my lord. Oh, pause. Slow motion. <laughs> Fast forward. Oh, she. Oh, she's about to break her neck. Let me put it in regular. I don't want her to get injured. Wow, that's your mama. Whoa. And then he going to be out there trying to help you out, low-key. Little boy in the lunch line talking to Adam 22 son. Yeah, he like, you know what? Them shoes is busted, but I'm going to help you upgrade. Buy Adam Mama Only Fans. Buy Adam Mama Only Fans. $4.99. Buy Adam Mama Only Fans. He damn near might become an affiliate. Do some affiliate marketing for Adam 22 Kid Mama and her Only Fans. Your mama throw game is tremendous. Now, let me ask you all, you guys a question. That is so, uh, see, you know, when you get to that level of disrespect, it is very clear that there's a beef. It's very clear that like, I wouldn't make a video like that and then see him in real life and expect him to like high five me. No, no. I, I make a video like that. When I see him in real life, I'm like, where's the clapper at? That's what I was inviting. That's how I felt. Huh? Yeah, I'm talking about your wife. That's off. That's already offline, uh, off limits, right? Yeah, then I'm talking about your kid. Yeah, that's real out of bounds. And that's how I actually feel if we have a beef. Don't bring me up. Don't bring me up. Huh? So someone's talking like that. You, you don't think there's a beef? There's another one. There's more. Okay, we have Frankie said, peace to the saints, masterful work on those demons, especially the bimbo in pink. Also, I missed the new member orientation due to work. Can you add me in the next assassin? Absolutely. We'd be happy to. And for those of you who become uh, new members at patreon.com slash the saint in the center, there you can see uh, much exclusive content. Oh, and actually, this, this is a private video for members. I actually probably ought not play this one. This was on private, so I won't play this one. But um. Yes, you can get access to exclusive content, some entertainment. A lot of it is great for female pickup, female management and influence. We got our Dr. Phil process, how to actually get in a woman's head effectively, how to calm her down, how to turn her up, how to turn her on. Um, in fact, how to punish women. There's just so many layers of game that you'll get with that Patreon membership. Highly recommend it. And once you join, you'll eventually, as he mentioned, go through new member orientation and as a result, be uh, able to access our private Discord and really join this thing of ours. And they all get together and do workouts as a community. Absolutely. We do $15 and up, but I'm going to read this one just because he said, new uh, viewer and ad admirer of your work. Appreciate the high level game you're demonstrating, big bro. Don't know why it took YouTube so long for your content to appear in my feed, but we are here now. Exactly. We are here now. It's a beautiful thing. And, you know, uh, God's work is unstoppable, apparently, because, you know, it's the demons that are actually helping us. And, you know, you're dealing with a demon because when they encounter someone who's upright, oh, it just burns them so badly. My, 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 it, it, burn, it burns them. You see, the funny thing is that a guy like Lil Nas X is, you know, he's still alive and kicking. They're not bothering him. They're celebrating him. In this sick era, they celebrate a Lil Nas X. But me, oh, they burn me at the stake. Huh? And that is how you know we are entrenched in a war of good versus evil. And, and I'm glad that the good is on the rise, but we must fight. We have Ross on Cash App said, IGDM, real offended beef breakdown. I'm not sure if he sent you a DM of a clip or what that means. Okay. Let me see. While you're doing that, where did they, uh, they come in? 
He came in on Cash App, but he's at IGDM. Okay. We have Joseph sent tuition. Shout out to Joseph. Appreciate it. You caught up? Yeah. Okay. You, you got well, you have to say you that for me to clip. know. Okay. So he did a breakdown, huh? It's amazing. And who sent that in? Ross. Ross. It's to your left. Were you reaching for your phone? No, no. Did you archive that? No. Okay, cool. Got it. Let me see. Okay, just give me a moment here. This is 15 minutes. Did he give us a timestamp? Okay. It's, uh, yeah, 15 minutes is a, it's a bit long. But let, let's take a little look-see. Yeah, uh, and in the future, if you guys give us a, a video clip for sure, uh, if you can provide us with a timestamp, that'd be helpful. With you, Marquette. Because you, it's Marquette, number one, and number two, you can never be with me on radically different levels. You should be terrified. Would I say that to you in, in person in front of your face? Boy, I would spit in your motherfucking face and you wouldn't do a damn thing Ooh. in real life. Ooh. A lot of people say they're life. savages when they're really a nice fucking guy. Me, I know that I'm mean and unpleasant. That's why when you called me, I said, hey, if you don't want it to be smoking, no, do you in your real fucking life believe that? I wouldn't tell you this to your face. Do you, do you really believe that? I don't know, right now. Uh, right clearly now. now. It's very evident you're aggressive and you have something to prove. You know? So, yeah, um... Yeah, we would have needed a timestamp on that one. You can send it the email going across the bottom of the screen. Now we, it's already, it's already done. We kind of need to carry on, but let's play a little bit more. And there was, wow, that's fascinating because I'm going to keep it a buck with you. Usually when he's doing his favorite thing, and that's embarrassing other people. Of, uh, black people, they enjoy the food being more cooked. And there was, wow, that's fascinating because I'm going to keep it a buck with you. He doesn't strike me as the type of guy who grew up around black people. He doesn't strike me as the kind of guy who currently lives around many black people. And he doesn't strike me as the type of guy who's dating a black woman or was adopted by a black family. I mean, someone let me know if I'm wrong. Is this not strange? You got three corny ass white dudes discussing black people as a topic? Is that not weird as shit right now? And somehow he's making assertions, or shall we say stereotypes, about what black people eat. I didn't know this man is a goddamn ethnographer. Done an ethnography on the blacks. Notice when Adam was talking greasy, he was talking greasy with his white buddies. Not normal white people. Corny ass white dudes who are bisexual. Not normal white guys. You know, like the ones we see every day out in the world, the ones that go outside. No, 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 no. Guys who engage in sodomy and are cucks who allow other men to sleep with their wives and their girlfriends. Three of those guys together talking greasy about me, which they would none of them say face to face. Adam didn't like milk. Why didn't he like milk? Because he can't identify with milk and he can't control milk. Milk comes in and you don't like milk because he's not the kind of white guy you are. He's straight up and down honest. He gonna throw hands if it's time to throw hands. He's not scared. He has integrity and he grew up in black culture, unlike Adam. You see, if, if this dude has a podcast, which he does, he can speak accurately about the behaviors and habits of black people. He grew up in a fucking black family. He grew up among black people. He hates this guy because this guy actually is what Adam would be if he was an authentic person engaging in the black hip hop culture. So he hates milk because milk is a real one. He hates milk because milk is not the kind of white guy he is. Hmm, something to think about. Carrying on to our next piece. I don't know if this is a symptom of living in Los Angeles or being raised by a strong mother, but he loves to do this. And from what I can tell, he's the best at it, by far. His most important and most scathing embarrassment was against none other than DJ Academics. Now, DJ Fatademics, living style. In a real way. See, when God made you, he made you with inferior genetics. So that when you eat and engage in gluttony, the fat just goes straight to your fat ass chipmunk face. Huh? Instead of making you tall and strong, he made you short and weak and of modest intelligence. To America, he said that he was rebuked by the African Americans. That is my culture. Then he said that when he was in Jamaica, he was listening to Beanie Man. Beanie Man. Bounty killer. Your mama looked like Bounty Killer. But anyways, he was listening to these guys and then people were talking about the Jay-Z and I. He, he was a loser in Jamaica. When Jamaica got to America, he's still a goddamn loser. Totally rejected and rebuked. In fact, in his last TV interview, he said, no one accepted me in high school. What kind of goddamn comment is that? That's tremendously embarrassing, especially for somebody who's calling other people a dweeb. They didn't accept me in high school. My boy, that would be the whole definition of a dweeb. Right now, it's just me slapping your helmet off and disciplining you, letting you know who the bitch Okay, fantastic. I appreciate you sharing that clip, and that's good work. We enjoyed that very much. Hey, Raptor Sport said, done with how to deal with a breakup. Very okay. insightful. Thank you. Wow. Been pessimistic because she left because she wanted a ring and baby. Now I got an apartment for us and moved my mom in too because she was homeless. Didn't like that. Wanted just us and left. Oh, I see. Well, you know, a real woman, she's going to stick with you through trial and tribulation. And what we all know is that life does hold challenge for all of us. You will experience the loss of your loved ones. You'll experience ill health. You'll experience loss of your wealth. And if you're not strong enough spiritually to sustain these things, you'll fall apart. 
And if you're not wise enough to know that these ills will touch all of us, then you'd be a fool, right? And you'd be fool to have a woman who also doesn't know that these things will occur and is not able to endure with you. So really, this is a blessing. It's, it's fine that she's left and she's done you a favor. You're welcome. <laughs> That's the easier way, right? Rather than have a kid and a baby with or have a kid in a marriage with her and then she wants to skip town. Yeah, so he got off easy. Beautiful thing. Carry on. Now you might say, well, what does Livingston, DJ Fatademics have to do with this at all? We're going to get to that. But first, I would like to make very clear, you, you've seen a number of different uh, pieces of content that not only was the beef between uh, Adolf22 and I, not only was it clear between us because there was content going back and forth. He made content about me on No Jumper. I made content about him on my channel. But also the internet was discussing it and fairly mainstream actors like DJ Fatademics, the fat-faced chipmunk fellow who likes a, a thumb up the patootie, that guy. Um, he also was making videos about it. So this is something that was in the mainstream of the manosphere, hip-hop culture, red pill spaces. So this was not a quiet thing. And more importantly, if you bring a guest on your show, surely you would research the guests. It seems like a basic and mind you, for the haters, I do want to let you know um, there, there's nothing wrong with hating. Just send it in as a super chat and we'll honor whatever you have to say. And in fact, as with the last hater, we invite you on screen and he refused to come on screen. So, no, we're not going to allow you to babble and detract from the chat, just you know, chatting away. No, no. You're, if you're a broke bastard who doesn't even have $15, we don't want to hear what you have to say because $15 is not very much money, which is to say that you don't mean what you're saying. So if you really mean it, you can send it as a super chat. And just because I'm a nice guy, actually I'm not, I'm a kind man. I'll let you come on screen and explain to us like why you're hating and what the, what your examples of, you know, why Marquette's a bad man. You, you, you can come and tell us. <laughs> I'd love to hear it really. Oh, real quick, just side note, I actually didn't know this. Now, I've put out a number of uh, lives, and I'll, I'll probably re-release some of them, just dragging Adam through the dirt because he deserves it. He's an actual dirt bag. Check this out. Did you guys know about this? Now, mind you, here's a funny thing. He was calling me Milk Dud Head, which I think is a reference to me being the bald head lover. Uh, look at his hair right here. This is when he was growing his hair back after getting his hair transplant surgery. You can see that it's very thin around the frontal lobe, I believe that's called. It's very thin and does not resemble the thickness or the coloration of the hair on the sides. It actually looks quite awkward indeed. And that female next to him, this broad looks like a jail pick of a like a, a motherfucking child molesters in the 1950s. Like what in the weird ass glasses? Those glasses make me uncomfortable. I feel like she touches children. Anyways, carrying on. Uh, let's read about this because I, I found this to be quite a curious thing. Ooh, that's an even uglier picture. How they, how they manage that. Yikes. So here's uh, Adolf 22, the hair plant, uh, hair transplant guy. Atlantic Records parts ways with no jumpers at off 22 following sexual assault. What? Say what? Atlantic Records has uh, announced that they've discontinued their relationship with no jumper podcast host at off 22 Grand Mason. Now, that's a curious last name, ain't it? Grand Mason. That's strange as hell, isn't it? You ever heard a motherfucking name Grand Mason? No. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of devil evil cultish thing was he raised within because that is not a normal surname a series of sexual sexual assault allegations not one not two a series like the bmw according to atlantic spokesman the record label has parted ways oh did they now what happened the new accusations oh you mean this, these aren't the only ones from model Lauren Duck, who Grand Mason recently attacked on Twitter. Oh, attacking your victims, are you? Shocker. Seems as though he hates the truth. Tried to attack me when I was speaking the truth yesterday. Good thing I'm not a disabled woman. Yes, that's right. She's a disabled woman. Huh? After appearing on his No Jumper podcast, Duck apparently asked if she could crash at his home in Los Angeles with his girlfriend. Duck claims that they went out after a party and willingly popped Xanax. Uh-oh! Did Marquette just a little while ago say that this guy is a degenerate drug addict whom you can tell has weird drug addict twitches? 
Ah, hmm. Shocker. So they're using Xanax drugs. Okay, got you. And while using drugs and quote unquote extremely drunk, she describes being attacked by Grand Mason. Aha. I'm not really aware of what's going on, she said. Well, that sounds like you're taking advantage of someone. Quote, and I remember we were sitting there and I realized that I'm being videotaped. You know what? All of this sounds just like his MO, doesn't it? Talked about his slore wife, talked about having intercourse with other women who are not his slore wife, but doing it with the slore wife, huh? Always into pornography. So videotaping, it makes perfect sense. Pointed out before I even read this article for the first time that he's a dope fiend. This sounds like some dope fiend activities, huh? Mr. Belmont said, you did a work of art on the whatever podcast. Fools despise wisdom and instruction. Yes, indeed. Very young. And so here's the funny thing. You had the chick in the pink, for example. She clearly has experienced something unfortunate at the hands of a male. Defending him probably doesn't really know him. Does she know that he has dealt with 16-year-old girls as an adult and even been so bold as to post about it on Twitter? Does she know that? Does she know that he basically with his wife pulled a Jeffrey Epstein on this handicapped woman? Now, that's some weird fetish stuff right there. You hear me? I'm going to need you to have all your limbs. That's just me, though. Maybe you'll need your knees. She's so thick. I can't see her knees. Where are her knees at? She's turbo thick. But yeah, he's dealing with a chick who's uh, basically handicapped. I wish there was a, a picture here. She's missing a limb. She experienced some unfortunate things. And this whole article, which I'm not going to read about the disgusting things, basically explains that the allegations were true enough that this ball got kicked out of his business dealings. And I think maybe a part of it is that this was one in a series, huh? Yes. And all of those hallmarks using drugs, recorded it, forced me into it, did it with his wife. That's what they do. Starting to sound real Jada Pinkett and Will Smith like, you know, these sexcapades starting to sound real, real Jeffrey Epstein. What was that broad? He was Ma Magdalena or Malena, something like that. But you all Maxwell, get the point. Something Maxwell. Oh, Maxwell Gislaine or something like that. Yes. Yeah, starting to sound real sick. So now you can see why Marquette Devon Burton is often calling out this perversion. It leads to many terrible things. Meddling with children in the wrong way. Victimizing women. Huh? Yes, I speak against all of these things. Yes, indeed. Now let me go ahead and see what DJ Fatademics had to say. And you would think DJ Fatademics at this stage would be wise enough to just give it, just don't mention Marquette. Like he has not learned. Let's see. Let's see if I can find that link. And if anyone has that link handy, feel free to email it to the uh, email address below. Can you find the original one that was texted to you? Or did I, that come through I, on Instagram? I don't, no, it wasn't text to me. I was told about it, but it was not text. Gotcha. I'll give folks a little bit of time to send that. You caught up? Yeah. Fantastic. Just looking for this DJ Fatademics link here, folks. Oh, he, he might have taken it down. That's actually what it looks like. I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> uh, very good. Very good. I'll give you guys a little bit of time to send in your comments, questions as we wind down. Also, if you happen to have that link, feel free to send it in. Um, otherwise, we'll go ahead and uh, shut her down. Oh, yeah, but the summary. The summary. Um, Brian tried to set up Rolo to get flamed by me. So that's what he does. Adam wasn't surprised to see me when I showed up, which he should have been. And we see that he was completely fake. He got obliterated. Here's the funny thing about Adam is that uh, he's such a just a, a weakling that he tried to get all the girls to to leave. He was like, I'm leaving. Who's with me? Who's with me? And like nobody left. The girl in the pink got up and then actually came back because she's a clout demon. Uh, I found that to be quite funny and very embarrassing. I'm, I'm very happy that I was able to be a part of that experience.
They said it's on his other channel. Okay, but we need the name of that. I, I'm asking, yes. Okay. I was hoping my people would be sharper than that. Like I know what his other channel is. Yeah, folks, I really enjoyed that. And you know, one thing I want to point out to you is that what you observe during that conversation is sometimes you're in the wrong context, right? One thing that Adam tried to do, he said, like, all the women on this side, we all think this. Well, of course, you guys are all sex workers, right? So in the context of being in a a, a an immoral environment, the immoral person is able to establish their morality as what is dominant and it appears normal and people associate that which is normal with being the standard or being good so it was ironic that you had a majority of sex workers and they're basically saying oh it's okay to do fill in the blank really fill in the blank with anything as long as the camera's rolling and that's something i really hope you guys paid attention to because you might find yourself in situations like this out in the society or even at work you know, like you work with imbeciles or, or weirdos and they're like acting like certain things are acceptable and really it's not and that's why i always encourage you guys that you know if you are if you feel like you're smarter than your boss go get a new job if you work at walmart and you're superior to the people around you stop working at walmart do not have yourself in the wrong environment because it's actually dangerous when you're around your inferiors all they really want to do is take you down because they secretly hate you because you're different Birds of a feather flock together. So if you're not of that feather, they're going to tar and feather you in a bad way. huh? So always try to be around greater people, certainly good people at the very least. I just sent you the link. Via text message, right? Correct. Thank you. And then it's around two hour, 41 minute mark. Uh, Well, the person supposedly is in like six. Okay. Two hour, 40 minute. 41. All right. Thank you to whoever was able to do that. Thank you for getting that over to me. Here we go. And Logan Paul got 7.3. And here comes. Oh, and this is the, the live chat here. This is a real live chat. Oh, it looks like someone reposted this. Is this academic? Channel, apparently. Nearly four a year ago. Bo oh, Mill. Cool. Yep. This guy. This is going to be a Bo Mill. God, this is my second nerd. time off. That's why I didn't even drink for this. I'm going to get drunk on flagrant. We're going to talk. See, that's a big difference. You know, these people are actual degenerates. I ain't even drink for this. Like, wow, you're a real degenerate loser. If you think you sound cool saying that, you sound like an idiot and a loser. You're at home drinking by yourself. That's like depressed behavior. Like this man is clinically depressed on live. That's great. That's wild. And that's the kind of era that we're in. I mean, you have people who listen to Jordan Peterson, who's a therapist, who's also uh, suffering, like trying not to off himself. And he's on psychotropic drugs, a therapist who sees a therapist. I mean, just imagine. We have Casual Germ said, peace to the saints, supporting the work. Appreciate you. Shout out to Casual Germ. And Christopher said, I admire how you're able to come so articulate without pausing. Any advice on bettering my communication skills and bettering my vocabulary? I get that question a lot, as you could imagine. And this is what prompted me to create the Master Communicator course. And what I'm doing with this course is being very thorough because communications is, of course, in part what you say, but also what you think. It's what you're able to assess of the crowd. And then there's interpersonal versus oratory. So we go through all those aspects. The best thing that I could do to answer your question is to say, are you saying, how can I speak better? Master Communicator course. Marquette Devon, I've not even promoted it yet because it doesn't release till January 10th, but you'd probably be wise to, to get it in advance. And it's we'll MarquetteDevon.com? Yes, and we'll probably uh, bump up the price at that point. Thank you for that question. Oh, mad shit. Um, I'm going to come up with my jokes. Don't worry. All right. I this dude's getting fatter. I got this dude is actually getting fatter. What the fuck else is going on? Ah, some old Someone walk in. How many can some walk out? Oh, did you this dude is fugly. So whatever podcast had my nigga Adam on last night, and he how was phony is that? How is Adam your N I G G A? First off, the blacks are idiots, and but he's not a foundational black American. He's a Jamaican. You think you're a real rude boy? He's a pussy boy, body man. So you're not a foundational black American like the N word. That's a foundational black American thing. Just side note, in case people were wondering, that's kind of our thing. That's our slang. 
just in case people are wondering. That's number one. Number two, um, all of the dumb blats, they use this word indiscriminately. Uh, so he's calling a white guy an N-I-G-G-A. He said, it's my nigga, referring to a, a white guy who probably mostly does not respect and regard blats very well. That's interesting. And then the other part that's strange is like, how is he your nigga? I mean, what does this really mean? You can't trust these people at any level. He's calling Adam his nigga. Didn't I just earlier play a clip where DJ Academics was saying, yeah, that was your wife and you wanted me to fuck your wife with you. Whoa, that's quite disrespectful, honestly. I guess maybe if you, since Adam deserves no respect, you can disrespect him and it just is okay. Funny thing about when I was obliterating Adam, you know, his whole brand is about being nonchalant and unbothered. Adam is always trying to be unbothered. Like, oh, I don't care about this. I don't care about that. But it seems as though even that Adderall couldn't keep him chilled out. Even those perks and those mollies and those Zans couldn't keep him chilled out. It's like I got under his skin pretty badly. He seemed to be very bothered. Hmm. I guess he should have popped more pills before he came on the show and <laughs> numb him out a little bit more. Huh? Carrying on. Who's on there with the nigga who's kind of a known hater. <laughs> but apparently Adam and him went head to head. Okay. Now the dude name is a. Uh, now, here we go again with the phony <laughs> shit. Here we go again with the phony shit, right? So you got DJ Fatademics, who I obliterated him. This is according to his fans. Just think about how bad the body was when his fans say, bro, the Saint the Center, he got you. Love you to death, but the Saint the Center bodied you. What they consistently try to do is like act like they don't know my name. Like, act, you've made three videos about me, three separate videos. Please stop it. it, it stop the cap. We'll, we don't believe you, okay? And when you say someone's a known hater, it's like, bro, are you going to do an objective review? Clearly not. You're still big mad and it's okay, but watch your mouth, boy. Watch your mouth. I get back on your ass. Pause. I don't want to sound like destiny out here. You dig? <laughs> These guys hang out with such persons. I don't want them to get confused and excited at the same time. Saint and sinner. Oh, I, usually, I usually don't say his name at all, but you know. <laughs> but. He be hating like a motherfucker. Um. The dude came on there and he just started going at Adam's jugular over Adam allowing his wife to get piped out. So I'll play a little bit of it. By the time we're done in the adult business, I'm sure she'll have shot other scenes with other guys and everything. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Can I ask Adam a question? Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you. Yeah. That's very respectful. Is this for the money or just yeah, like you're like, respectful. this is what I'm called to do? I would say it's primarily for the money, the same way that probably most of the girls here wouldn't uh, be. I'm about to get done the if They didn't have OnlyFans that were profitable for them. But at the same time, I mean, me and her have been hooking up with other girls for the duration of our relationship. And we actually had one off camera boy, boy, girl threesome with my wife. Just side note, um, that sound real uh, like you like to touch kids. We've had one boy, boy, girl. What? I thought you were a man, and I thought those were women. Boy, boy, girl. Bro, I'm uncomfortable. I don't even know if I should be listening to this. I might fuck around in the feds show up listening to some shit like this. Boy, boy, girl. What? That's strange. Why do they talk like that in the sex industry? Doesn't make sense to me. And a friend of mine, within like the first month that I met her, we were out drinking one night, and we ended up having some fun in that sense. So it's not like completely that outside the realm of things that I would do for free, but you know, we don't have a lot of... Uh, <laughs> crazy off-camera sexual experiences almost everything that we do that's out of the ordinary is on camera so is there because i don't know what you're worth but i have a sense that you're doing reasonably well so if there was no money to be made would you continue on with it I think uh, that was a conversation that her and I had that made us realize that we wanted to kind of start pushing the boundaries of what we were doing on camera was she said do you really think that we're going to be together for the next 20 years and that we're never going to just notice, by the way, that's not what I asked you, Brody. I asked you if there was no, pff, come on, you're not even answering the question. Uh, swap or, or bring another penis into our sexual situation. And real quick, just side note, when the ism is strong, people mess with it. You feel me? Not everyone's going to mess with it. Says, yo, this bald dude is on point. Seen him on FNF. You know, when the when the ism is pure, it can be understood by certain people. But haters gonna hate regardless, man. You could be Martin Luther King. They'd be like, you don't know how to public speak. But like, okay, that's, that's weird because I'm Martin Luther King. But go on. And I said, no, I definitely feel like I'm 
comfortable enough that I could see us doing that as time goes by. And then we ended up actually orchestrating it on camera. Are you bisexual? No. Okay. <laughs> right. Let's sign up. All right. So with regards to bringing the other dude in, would you say that was primarily driven by her? Um, I, I would say it was very mutual. You know, we, we just kind of realized that, you know, after doing that Jason Love scene, we just didn't realize how viral the whole thing was going to be. Mm -hmm. And so we kind of got set on the path of thinking any of boring. us had ever been involved with so at that moment we kind of realized like oh this is kind of our you gotta love these people who pretend not to know you see right here saint and sinner is his name or something like that right it's like <laughs> please stop it we have stop the cap we have rakely swimming his back and said treating your wife like a bowling ball with another man is crazy work rancid indeed it's vile just the way he said that like kind of like made me sick it's crazy thing that we have to sort of push at the edges of our conventional relationship and a long answer be conventional, incapable. well i mean Ain't mostly conventional well <laughs> well i mean we sleep with other girls but off camera, our relationship is entirely <laughs> traditional crazy all right so what i'm really trying to figure out is because you said you were uncomfortable with the Jason love scene initially. Right? I was a little conflicted. About right. it. Little it was a little bit of a weird line. Thing. And so remo I'm trying to figure out like where your soul is. And as much as like removing ah. money from the equation. And honestly, at this point, I don't even think money is really the driving force. But, yeah. Just to get it out there. Uh, me and her are both multimillionaires and have right. been for many, many years. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. Many, many years. <laughs> Uh, just to get it out there, me and her, we're both multimillionaires and have been for many, many years. Well, okay, so at the very lowest, multimillionaire, you'd have to have two million. You said her and I. So that would mean that you have two million, she has two million minimum together. That'd be four million. You said many, many years. Motherfucker said many, two times, right? So let's just say uh, that would be four years. And let's just say you were keeping your income consistent. There's no level of growth. Uh, four years, four million dollars collectively, four times four, that's 16 million, right? So you're sitting on 16 million dollars minimum, according to his words, not mine. Why do you need to do porn? Why not just do no jumper? Hell, you could even retire, right? 16 million just invest it, you could retire, live off of you know, yeah, okay, okay, uh huh. Pay attention how he said, I set him up. Like, he doesn't have the intelligence to see where I was going, he thought he did, but he didn't. So he basically just pointed out, I don't need the money. Okay. Exactly. So, so money's not the driving force. So if it were just up to you and she were a robot as opposed to a human and you could have it to where you could have things open on your side, but closed on her side, mm -hmm. would you prefer that? Um, I asked him, would you prefer to live as a real normal man? Most people are like, yeah, for sure. <laughs> Look at this weirdo. Um, to be honest, she came to me before we started kind of pushing out the boundaries of our relationship. And she said, what do you think that we should do? Do you think that I should just kind of hang it up and have another kid? Or do you think that we should keep doing this for a few more years and kind of see how far we can take things? And I said, you know what, let's, let's push at the edges. Let's see how far we can take this. So, um, it is primarily a financial thing, but also I can say that when we shot the scene with this other guy the other day, I had a great time. It was, it was that was weird. fun overall. Like your time was enhanced because he was there. Because me personally, I like my meat to be the only one on the sandwich. Right. <laughs> uh, no, it was exciting. It, it, it was exhilarating for sure. Look, you know you're a funny. Uh, you, you, I was about to use the N word. You know you're a funny N word when your your haters, when your haters are laughing at your jokes. See, it's just some sometimes the skill or quality is just hard to deny and lord knows dj academics hate hates my guts i mean i flayed him flamed him into oblivion you hear me he hates my guts but he's still laughing um but the reason it's funny is because it was clever but it was also funny because it's truthful good humor has that element of truth that's why dave Chappelle is so good at what he does shout out to uh beats beauty writes eve has convinced adam to eat the apple once again and you're right the names couldn't be more appropriate what kind of hot dog? It's just like one hot dog on the bun. Jeremy, like you got right. all these Vienna sausages coming out the woodwork. So you find that it's <laughs> it's enhanced by that? Because I find like it's, I that was fun. Yeah, yeah. Was okay. in a different way than, you know. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. Now, look, it, it reads, chat, bruh, how can you even rationalize doing that? You cannot rationalize it. You can only lie. 
Adam should have never sat down with this guy. Ah. Okay. Here's the thing. Why is Adam, that, DJ Fatademics? Adam is at a place in his career where he should, he's the A side in most of these media rooms. Oh, oh so he's going to say, instead of saying Adam shouldn't have sat down with this guy because this guy is smarter. Adam shouldn't have sat down with this guy because this guy's more clever. Adam shouldn't have sat down with this guy because this guy's superior in every way. Now he's about to start going back to his go-to, <laughs> which is his. They have the same escape card. Th their escape card is the, the lie of, I have so much money, I can't talk to anybody. Stop it. Stop it. All those women around him are there because Adam, whether y'all know it or not, he's the biggest porn star out. He's the most famous porn star out, right? You know, truthfully, I could ne neither confirm nor deny that, but I think it's embarrassing if you know that to be a fact. I mean, you're a pervert. It's sick, sad. Like, there's no He's shame. the A-side. And at some point, you Look have- These weirdos. Look at this homosexual right here. He writes, he's kink shaming. Who cares? Word? That's a thing? We got fat shaming, slut shaming, and kink shaming. You know this dude is a weirdo. He be he. None of his chairs are normal at his house. All his chairs got a dildo strapped to him. Yeah, he he be at he be kicking it with Abba. <laughs> this is crazy. Talking about kink shaming. You know you's a weird motherfucker. Good lord. After when you know you're the A side, you can't be getting dominated by someone who needs to come up off you. And I'm gonna be honest with you, this guy needs to come up off Adam. That's the fact. But can you be honest that I flamed your ass and then you got scared? Just like the whole internet. Y'all motherfuckers better start learning. Stunna Sun said, Hey, please keep this up on YouTube. I'm just out getting off work, so I missed the beginning. Peace to the Saints. Peace to the Saints. Now, is he making some valid points? Yeah. Duh. However, if I'm Adam, I, would, I ain't sitting out with him, period. Sorry. You know what I mean? <laughs> now, he basically just said, is the saint and the sinner telling the truth? Is the saint telling the truth? Yes. But I wouldn't sit down with him because I cannot compete with the truth. So I cannot compete with the truth, so I would not sit down with him. That's powerful. You know, sleeping with other girls, we've done that hundreds of times together. Right. So this was something that switched it up a little bit, mm -hmm. you know? Do you think with all of these unusual sexual experiences that it might lead you down a path to where you have to go to extreme things to get off? Uh, no, I've been jerking off to the exact same type so of content weird. my entire life. So mm -hmm. the idea that porn, that guys who watch porn have to sort of slowly get into more and more extreme I'm not talking content. about watching it. You're in it. Right, <laughs> yeah, but I mean, <laughs> I've been doing porn on camera character. with her, yeah. and this is the only thing that we've done that took it to another level. Mm -hmm. You know, we did seven years straight of just having sex with other girls on camera. This is the... And you know what's also funny to me, ladies and saints? And so you can see someone right here. He writes, Google dude. He's rich, just like Adam. Now, you often have haters who'll say things like even Adam. He said he per portrays himself as a rich man on the Internet. I don't think I've ever had a, a live stream of like, I'm so rich. Let me tell you the ways. Let me count the ways. I've never had that live stream. And in fact, often I teach you about business because that's what I know. I teach about how to make money, how to create product based business. There's a ton of people in the chat right now who have made money from my teachings. And I don't teach any get rich quick scheme because I didn't get rich quick. You hear me? I got rich with tremendous amounts of work. If I had to redo what I did to get to where I am, I wouldn't want to do it. It was a tremendous amount of work. But I don't ever have a stream about, I'm so rich. Look at me. Why? Because the thing that I teach you is the most important is your happiness. And that's the hardest thing to acquire. We find people acquire wealth. They still fail to acquire happiness. This is why Adam 22 was in that, that state of mind that he was in. That's why he was so easily undone. He doesn't have peace. He doesn't have happiness. That's what I focus on with you. Yeah? Carrying on. The only thing that we've done that kind of opened it up a little bit to the tune of us becoming like probably one of the most viral couples in America sure. in the past year. Uh, so in terms of where... It's funny how he thinks being a viral couple is a good thing no matter what made you viral. St. White said, peace to the saints. Mark P is over at my place and we watch the <laughs> podcast live. The Sassin is way more than an internet group. The ops need to know that we Sassin are nothing in real life. 
in a real way. Shout out to St. White. Shout out to Mark. And Mark get ends up everywhere, huh? Because yeah. St. White is kind of out the way, isn't he? Yeah. <laughs> Shout out. I love to see it. I love to see that. And a lot of these guys do business together. Those are two great businessmen yeah. that I can vouch for. And they do business together, right? Yeah. Yeah. Great businessmen I can vouch for. We could take it. I mean, I'm not doing any gay shit. Mm-hmm. And, uh, Bruh, I'm done. What? First off, first off, rewind. If you have done something and you have to make the following statement, I ain't doing any gay shit. Bro, you didn't probably did some Abba and preach shit, man. You've been milked, man. You've been milked. Listen, never in life have I ever had a sexual experience and had to make a public statement. I ain't doing no gay shit. Like, nah, it was never. You can never confuse it. Why? Because it was only me, one man. So it can't be gay without, without any other man. But the suit, the moment you introduce another man, then you might need to start making some proclamations. I ain't doing no gay shit. Uh, well, I don't know, bro. Um, being a, a a cuck, that's pretty gay. You know, uh, sharing your wife with another dude, that's pretty gay. I mean, I hear you say you're like 16. It's not a, enough hoe to go around. You know, be a hoe shortage when you're young. Where the hoes at? Sometimes we used to walk in the party, look around. Where the hoes at? That's what you was looking for. It's very rare you find hoe heaven, especially at a young age. So sometimes there's a shortage. Yeah, you might have to share a hoe. It get like that. I don't recommend it. Not my cup of tea. But I could understand. But if you're a porn actor and it's your wife, after all, like, what is the logic? A multimillionaire porn actor sharing your wife? You Captain Share a hoe. That's what you like to do. <laughs> That's one of your hobbies. You dig? Yeah, on his on his eHarmony profile, hobbies, uh, podcasting, sharing my wife. Like this dude's a weirdo. You have to say, ah, I ain't no gay shit, bro. You gayer than him. That's why I asked you if you was bisexual. And for me, what does bisexual mean? Gay. That's what that is. That's gay for the people who can't just admit it. That means they halfway out the closet. They ain't fully got out. They're halfway in there. One foot in, one foot out. Okay. Now. Uh, The fact that he had to say that on his own without any prompting lets us know everything we need to know. And I promise you that over time, he will eventually hit us with the bad bunny. Bad bunny, baby. Which is to say, he going to say he's bisexual, which means what again? Gay. Carrying on. So that's probably like the primary thing without obviously people asking us if we would ever shoot with a trans person. I'm not interested in that either. It's crazy. So I can't really think of where we would. Wait, you, you shoot with a dude. I mean, I'm damn near like, do I give him more credit for shooting with a trans? Because a dude is just a dude. It's like you, the dude ain't even like pretending to be a one. No credit for either. No cre- Both of them, you, you're losing points on that. Yeah. We got to mark off enough points to where you didn't failed. Yeah. In life, in life. So you're a weirdo. And why are you bringing this up? No one called you gay, but you brought it up. No one asked you about sleeping with trans, but you brought it up. I think there's a reason. Huh? Come on. Good. Okay, without belaboring it, I'm going to let you carry on. Sure. Uh, just one last piece. You know, sometimes we aren't really, you know, seeing ourselves in as much as you said she brought the conversation to you. You said that you didn't feel comfortable initially with the uh, Jason Love being involved in. Well, and you I addressed to the Jason one Love second, one thing. Second. It was just once it actually took place i had a tiny amount of buyer's remorse right that whoa I it reads zach lee reviews lgbtq cinema on his channel that's special i didn't know that that's vile quickly replaced with realizing like oh this is not a big deal nothing changed in our relationship after she shot with Stop another it. guy so uh that was pretty abated quickly right so it's like called the inversion of morals oh, which is oh, to say that deep. truth be told in your heart of hearts you're not comfortable with it you, oh, want no, to, you want to retain your I've spouse. Why are you interrupting? Of, once are I, you interrupting? I didn't interrupt you. With it, I didn't interrupt are you interrupting? I do want to well, hear you You're out. kind of pushing like a fake narrative. Are you interrupting? I'm uncomfortable with but it. But I never interrupted you. are big mad. I never interrupted you because I want to hear you out. You're big mad. By correcting you before you. I'm not trying to get you. I sincerely am interrupting. Just real quick, for those of you who might consider yourselves red pill, I want to invite you to this ism. And you can see the error in red pill all the time. They tell you, get your money. Get your money. You're going to get women. Get your money. Get a hot girl. Is it true? Blue-haired booty bandit. Plenty of money. Gets a wife. A wife. Imagine he's sharing her again. You got these weirdos. I'm going to need the white delegation to stand up and condemn this. But the point is that blue-haired booty bandit gets a wife. Then what happens? Divorced. Cheated on. Oh, interesting. 
Adam's on the same path, except he had the, the stupidity to make this girl pregnant. But here's the weird thing. Didn't they say if you get money, you get women? But the blue hair booty bandit got money. Now he's divorced. Adolf 22 gets money and now he has to share his wife. I know people who are middle class, poor, and homeless who have a better setup than that. So maybe getting money is not the answer. Maybe too many of these dimwits tell you to get money because money is their God and it's their go to because money is a value. But the greatest value from a man is inside of here and inside of here. And if you don't have it here and here, you won't have it anywhere else. That's the problem. They lacked it here. They lacked it here. The woman could see that. And that's why they trash these guys. Huh? Come on now. Right, interested in what you have to say, but I didn't interrupt you one time. So the I want you guys to notice how player that was. You heard me? Like he interrupted me the first time I let it slide because I'm a kind gentleman. The second time I had to call it out like, Brody, you are emotional. Why are you interrupting? Like a child, petulant child. But you see how calm and smooth, it was silky how I was like, bro, you interrupting me. You see how I did that real smooth like? While he was escalating, I was just even tone. Why? No no need to be mad. You heard me? I'm just dishing out this truth with ease. Listen. I'm to save you a little bit yeah. of breath because yeah. by correcting you. Before yeah, you I'm not trying to get you yeah. angry. I, I sincerely am I'm interested in angry. what you, you have to say, angry. but I didn't interrupt you one time. Got him. So the reason I asked is because, as I said, you started off, you said that you felt uncomfortable when it happened. She brought up the conversation. You're not bisexual. Mm. So sometimes when things happen and you want to keep your, your lady, you make the adjustment compromising. But in your heart of heart, that's not really what you wanted. So you're being open and then you had this idea planted and then you start adopting it thinking like, okay, well, I'm okay with it. Maybe it's something that I signed off on too. So you assign it mutuality when in actual fact, the inception of that idea came from her and you've adjusted to it. I wouldn't say the inception of the idea came entirely from her. This is a conversation we've been having throughout the entirety of our relationship. Shout out to the real one supporting the work. I can't let you talk crazy on my man saying he probably got more bread than you act. And people see what it is. You dig Cat writes, bro speaks like a professor for real, not going to lie. Right. And that's the difference between me and these other persons. They got courses and they do all this teaching, but I'm the only person who's had Ivy League colleges cut me checks to go and lecture. And when I went and lectured, I lectured on business. So I'm lecturing to you on the same topics that I've lectured to Ivy League business school students. So, you know, like I can really do this. I've been paid to do it at a high level. It's not like an internet course that I'm doing just to enrich myself without actually having the skills to deliver to you. Whereas everybody else, I'm like, uh, what's your educational background? Who's paid you to do this before you came on the internet? And what's your accomplishment level? Was well, not there. And that's precisely why they're angry because when I show up I say hey well where are the standards and they're like well we got to keep this guy out of the way because he's making the consumer ask what is your qualification to do what you say you can do I mean imagine you got a guy like Sneeko also a cuck huh you got a cuck trying to teach you about women imagine you got a guy like Sneeko teaching you how to be successful in life when it's like bro you're in your early 20s you haven't even lived much life you got a guy who's a fake Muslim trying to teach you about religion it's like come on where do we get this stuff from we have Giovanni sent $50 on Cash App. Shout out to Giovanni. Oh, wait. Baller alert. So he has two comments. It says, peace to the saints. Big homie, I was dying the whole time. The intellectual slaughter was award winning. Yeah. But I'm not going to lie. I woke up conflicted today at the thought they really tried to set you up. Where they did. He wrote, not sitting well with me. Not at all. Look, they, they really did try to set me up. And here's the funny thing about it. Ironic. You, when you're really strong, just imagine a setup is a platform for you to fall off of, right? They, they set you up, set you up to knock you down. And they tried to do that. And I snatched victory from the jaws of defeat. Huh? I snatched victory from the jaws of defeat. I knowingly went into a situation where they created, created an environment in which I should have been disadvantaged. One of three conservative persons against seven liberals up against the guy who's supposed to have all the clout and the millions of followers and all the wealth went in there, dominated, bodied them, went viral, and then walked out safe and sound. That's amazing. Okay. St. DX came in on Cash Shop. He said, they're tough until the big bad wolf shows up. Right. That's right. As we met more and more male performers, I was male comfortable performers. with sort of slowly over time realized that this was something that we both felt comfortable with. 
Yeah. So when you say that you were comfortable with, right. And it came over time. Whereas with the females, it just came straight away, almost uh -huh. like a natural thing you might say. Uh -huh. So why in terms of when the guy comes along, there has to be a process because it's a process, but adjusting to something that's unpleasant. Got him. Um, <laughs> why was there a process that I just boggled his dumb ass. Notice he just repeated my question for the first time. Why? Why? He repeated my question because his slow brain needed time to think and try to weasel his way out with lies. And secondly, if you guys have ever observed DJ Fatademics Livingston, this guy is a loud mouth. Well, he's been dead quiet while I've been speaking. Turns out I've been speaking the language of truth and facts. He hadn't been able to respond. He hasn't been able to object. That's what happens when you talk it that real. Even your enemy had to sit back in his fat body and just chill and just take that. Like Diddy said, you did. Now, understand this. Um, we're eventually going to hear him try to pop off something. But I want to hear him tell the truth. Will it happen? Probably not. When the guy comes along, there has to be a process because it's a process of adjusting to something. that's you act learning. You learn it. Um, why was there a process that it took some adoption? What are you asking? Yeah, it seems as though different than the females. The females came naturally, and it seemed to not be an issue. One 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 just $200. I guess it is fair that you get to bang other girls. Working forever. So for me, it's like, you know, I would like to leave the game. with. Now notice right here, it reads, Saint asked Adam for the fade. Adam backed off it, which is a well-known fact. That alone, we should be like, bro, he's a loser. Like, where I come from, like, if somebody asks for your fade, you turning down fades? Yeah, bro, you's a loser. Matter of fact, we might pack you out just because you's a clown. Yeah, we gonna, now you getting jumped just because you were scared of that fair one. You's a loser. And how you scared of a fair one and you're bigger? Wow. Loser. Weak. Huh? Then you have people saying, this your boy, Ack? That's right. Losers hang with losers. With, I don't know, 10, 20, 30 million dollars. Yeah, so basically, you said the reason the value is the financial value. I'm so confused. Nick, the you, last you know clip, okay. the last clip from Lena's Instagram, it's pulled up. That's bad. That's bad. Set. I'm sure he had a good time. I, uh, you know, grew accustomed to it rather quickly. So, did you have one one final point or anything for Andrew? I do want no, to. No, th there there was a point in which, like the the argumentative piece i was getting to kind of reach the culmination i don't i thought they got it but they didn't understand it do you do you want to summarize that did you do you recall yeah so basically you said the reason the value is the financial value okay. is the financials you get for, from the videos but then you okay so so this is where i do think damn bro quit stuttering so damn much shit he i know his live streams are three hours when in actual fact they really should be 40 minutes <laughs> DJ Act, every live stream, five hours. It really is supposed to be like 20 minutes because he started off like, did it really? Did you, it, it, really? Did it, did it, 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 boom, a clap. Did you, it, it, uh, actually, uh, uh, did you, did you, did you, did you, it sounded like the motherfucker. I mean, good Lord, bro. Spit it out. Somebody send that man the master communicator course. This man has a speech impediment. Now, that's fine to have a speech impediment, but don't also be fat at the same time and ugly at the same time and tacky at the same time and have a receding hairline all at the same damn time. Fucking two bad bitches at the same damn time. Come on, man. Point. And I think Adam, now, let me re rewind so we can hear him stutter. And the For value fun. is the financial value fun. is the financials you get for, from the videos but then you okay so so <laughs> this is where i do think that would point and i think I that was amazing this thing is like okay uh, okay uh, okay so 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 sh we should make a track okay so 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 okay okay so 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 okay oh, okay man that's crazy it's amazing okay we have Devonte came back on cash shop he said more tuition support the work in a real way, shout out to those supporting the work. Truly, you are appreciated. Adam got Let me it. rewind that. Why is he stuttering? Said the weird. I like stutterers because they're kind of funny. And as much as when they stutter on one word, they pick another word. So low-key, people who stutter, they're like a human thesaurus because they have to think of a word really quickly that they can pronounce, right? So if I were to try to say the word car, but I can't pronounce it, 
I'd have to then quickly switch to the word automobile, like really quickly. Like G DJ, DJ Academics would be like, I'm about to go to the automobile. It's amazing. I kind of like that. <laughs> hey, meet me at the vehicle. <laughs> this motherfucker loser. Didn't everybody else learn to speak when they were like toddlers? Isn't that when you learn how to talk? <laughs> Dumb fuck was he. Everybody else learning how to talk. Everybody else in class doing the ABCs. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. This nigga, this fat ass nigga in the corner, like. <laughs> this nigga couldn't even start the song. That's amazing. What's worse, not being able to start it or just stuttering like halfway through? Like, A, B. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, man. This is amazing. Damn it. This is, does stuttering affect singing, though? Maybe he should just sing everything he say. Does stuttering affect singing? I don't know. Stuttering is the weirdest shit on earth because you know it is actually a psychological problem. It's a psychological problem. You're messed up in the head if you stutter. How do we know, Marquette? Well, here's the evidence. Sometimes you can say the, the word, but other times you can't. You're oh. really good at that. What kind of sense does that make? It doesn't make any sense. You have a psychological issue. And part of it, you know that you ain't shit. There's something in you that's like, look, I ain't shit. I need to let everybody know by fucking up every single word and butchering the most basic form of human connection, which is speech. He doesn't believe in what he's saying. That's why he's, he's it's telling not coming him lies. Out. Yeah. I think you correct. Carrying on. Shout out to this ball. Is the financial value is the mm. financials you get for, from the videos, but then you. Okay. So, so <laughs> this is where I do think they have a point. And I think Adam got to like, he has to get a better answer for this. Cause I've asked him this question too. Notice he said, Adam has to get a better answer. Not Adam needs to live the right way. But Adam needs to find a way to lie better, is what he said. That's amazing. Huh. Amazing. Some of the bullshit that they were talking about, not bullshit, but what they were talking about before and they were asking him. They asked Adam, Who's they? listen, the majority of these women that are sitting around the table, they're only fans models. However, most of them, they have to do only fans and some other things to get money. Correct. OnlyFans isn't self-sustainable for them yet in terms of just financial. Which I said. Obviously, if you ask most women would that get and it. Shout out to people who get it. He writes W saying easy 300,000 views. I'll take it. Appreciate it. I'll take it. Now, here's the funny thing, too, is is he going to evaluate if what Adam is saying is correct? He seems to be conceding that what I've said is correct. But let's see when Adam starts making up lies. Let's see if he addresses that. Only fans, they're not gonna say, Hey, I just like showing my butthole for $4.99. They're usually saying it's a means to an end. I'm doing it for money. I get that money, I'm gonna do other things with it, but I don't want to, I'm, I'm not enjoying or basking in the fact that I'm exposing or selling my body for subscriptions. He asked Adam, Hey, why do you you know your ism is strong? Renegade writes, Saint and Sinner really does talk some real ish on his platform, and I'm a female saying this. Females don't say that about them other boys because they weirdos, though. Shout out. Guys do it, and Adam basically says that financial motivation is very huge. Like, for example, the scene with, 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 with Jason Love. Bro, are you lying on his behalf? Didn't he earlier say, well, we're both multimillionaires. We've been multimillionaires for many years, and, you know, uh, so, and I don't even buy fancy stuff, neither does she. So, you know, we really don't do anything with the money. You know, we just maybe buy some properties, invest in businesses. In other words, you don't need the money. Okay. So what are you talking about? You're making up lies on his behalf and you're no better at lying than he is. And that's why I often remind the saints that either you tell the truth or you just be silent, especially when dealing with women, they have great memories and they become emotional. They attach emotion to memories. It helps them retain it better. And you'd be much wiser to just be silent or tell the truth. It's very difficult to um, lie. I'm people try. 
It was very difficult. Shout out to Nikki. She has a good sense of humor. She writes, my daughter stutters, and I should not be laughing this hard. I appreciate you. Thank you for having a sense of humor carrying on. Love that he allowed Jason Love to do whatever with his wife. He said he and Lena made millions off of that scene, right? Okay, cool. The next question, which I thought was, I, I ain't gonna lie, it was a decent train of thought. The, the dude asks Adam, he says, well, he said, the dude, bruh, stop it. You have utter respect because I'm a boss and I have, I destroyed all of you. you. I can't even pretend to stutter. Listen, I damn near have just developed listening to DJ academics. I'm damn near about to develop a stutter. That's amazing. Okay. We have, go ahead. Re we have Daryl. <laughs> On Cash App, said ducked fade and pink dress had more backbone. Sad. Right. Right. You caught up on the super chats? We just one just came through. All right. It's C said, let us be for real here. Adam was the one who was truly set up by the whatever podcast. If you lock a zebra in a cage and a lion falls into that cage, the lion is not the one who is trapped. You just gave him a free meal. Peace to the saints. Peace to the saints. You know, the funny thing is. He was not wise enough, perhaps due to his hubris, to realize that he wasn't the lion. He was, in fact, the zebra. And to me, that's the comedy of the whole affair. Even you have a DJ academics really should be terrified to even speak my name. But here he is. So there are many things that we're going to have to set right in this world. And I'm not surprised that the zebra or the antelope thinks that they are the lion because we're in an era where Bruce Jenner thinks he's Caitlyn Jenner. So things are upside down, but we'll get this all tuned up in a jiffy. Carry on. And Lena made millions. Let me rewind it so you can hear. Is very huge. Like, for example, the scene with, 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 with Jason Love, that he allowed Jason Love to do whatever with his wife. He said he and Lena made millions off of that scene, right? Okay, cool. The next question, which I thought it was, I, I ain't gonna lie, it was a decent train of thought. The, the dude asks Adam, he says, well, um, what are you doing with the money or why do you need to have so much money? Because I think he made a point to say $2 million and $50 million, depending, unless you're living a wild lifestyle. You know, once you get the millions, like, of course, if you have $100 million compared to $5 million, that's a, that, that's there's a difference in lifestyle. But the difference between two and five isn't that much in what you could do in the lifestyle you could live. Right. So I guess he's asking Adam, what the fuck do you do with the money? Then Adam responded to him by saying, we really don't spend money. Like, we don't use our money for anything. It's not like they buy expensive stuff. It's not like they're going on crazy vacations. It's not like they're they're trying to save to buy something else. He says the money just sits there. And I guess what the dude was saying and the, the woman's now going to interpret now real quick think about the levels of pain i've caused dj academics he won't even say my name like that man is hurt hurt think about the levels of pain and anguish he won't even say my name he keeps calling me the dude it's almost inconvenient to call someone the dude right now i am that dude ironically but it's inconvenient that's how bad i hurt him he won't even speak my name this boy is hurt jesus but anyways, he's conceding that it was a masterful argument and performance. And I always deliver. Well, if you're saying you're doing this weird version of porn for money and you're just getting money to hoard, but you're not using it for any purposes, that seems like it's not a good reason for why you'd be doing all this shit. You're going to hear explain it. You also say that you don't do anything with the money, that it doesn't really matter to you, so you guys don't live a luxurious lifestyle, that the money is just kind of sitting there. So how is that a, finan a financial value if you don't even use it? Well, her and I are building a business, and also, you know, we have plans business. of not working forever. So for me, it's like, you know, I would like to leave the game with, I don't know, 10, 20, 30 million dollars. And so us doing that was probably the greatest windfall. That's the weird thing to me is you don't have 10 million dollars? You've been doing uh, No Jumper for how long? You're also doing porn, and there's two of you in the public eye, and you don't have $10 million? Interesting. I find that to be fascinating. All the money that we ever got from doing anything, and it was relatively painless for, for one, us. One quick question. 
are you concerned about your child? I believe it's a daughter. She's a daughter, right? Mm -hmm. I have a daughter. I just gave birth a couple months ago. Do you ever worry that one day she'll see this content and maybe would you want her to be doing content like this? Is this something that would make you proud as a father to a young daughter? I think every right here, person writes, Adam got killed on the show, which is correct. Every parent wants to see their offspring do better than them. So for sure, I wouldn't like to see her, you know, just sort of default to that just because she knows that her parents did it. Um, uh, you don't always so? say that. I just can't you're a funny imagine, guy, bro. <laughs> funny guy. Okay. I don't know. Um, so you're dating a S Slovakian, Slovakian? <laughs> yeah. Involved with this? Or, no. Sorry, like, I'm... Bill sitting next to an 18-year-old. I'm like, oh my gosh. Like, okay. Right. <laughs> Wait, is anybody like... Younger than 20 here. Same. Same. Cool. Same. Is that Fantastic. Good? Okay. Uh, so uh, your relationship status. I used to say that my. So that's kind of like the red pill. The high value man. Men should be allowed to. Having in a long term relationship. So I try out here. <laughs> okay, so, bro, why you gotta fucking oh my God. throw me in that? Okay. But I feel like it's like what, what point, I want. What I want my dad to watch me having sex with someone else. Recorded, so, bro, is not necessary. There, there, there's no life on camera and life off camera. It's oh, either you're, either you're monogamous or you're not monogamous. If you got a movie role and you yeah, kissed but, a girl but, in the movie role, would you still be monogamous in your relationship? I mean, I realize that the sex thing is more of a whoa, real physical whoa. fact, right? Did you compare a movie no. kiss? You compared a movie kiss to your girl getting smacked well, down? It literally, by is it's still they're making a piece act. of content. They're making a film. I actually agree with him. I would of say that's course. I feel like you're intentionally girl. misunderstanding what I'm saying. No, no. Not at all. I mean, it's all. pretty obvious that there is a difference between doing things off camera. Let me ask you a question. Right? If you think I'm intentionally misunderstanding, you think if we took a poll right now, we said, would you consider Adam's relationship monogamous? Would people vote yes, it's monogamous, or no, it's not monogamous? Obviously, it We're comes with, with a very being. big caveat that says, why must there be a caveat? On camera, the rules are slightly. But that's the whole point. There's no caveat. You're creating a no, there false is a caveat. Frame. I just named the caveat. You're creating I think a, everybody a here frame. actually understands yeah. it, right? Yeah. No, yeah, no, I that's not everybody. true. He, my boy said, look, my wife's not a whore. Let me ask these whores. All these whores agree that these whores are not whores, and these whores also agree that my wife's not a whore. <laughs> Bro, knock it off, man. Ask some normal people. We have a subsection of human scum here. We don't even have normal humans here. What are we talking about? You see all no, the girls no. nodding their head? No. <laughs> That's because you have three conservative individuals here, and then you I have mean. everyone else here is in yeah, sex work. She, said, I she mean. just said she understands. Dude, I would say. She's not in sex work. She's. <laughs> I yeah, would but why say. Put her like, between... yeah. This is confusing, right? Oh, yeah. Because she's pretty, and I need her next to me. No, I'm just saying. Like, like... Yeah. Yeah. Hold on. Just a second. Your wife is a sex worker. Daddy. There is no monogamy. Mm. You are the one pretending. Oh. Settled. I'm a sex worker as well. Settled. Correct. Yeah. And you Adam both have six, herpes. Six, six. Oh, I yeah. thought it was 22. Oh, yeah. It's, it's Adam 16. Oh. Got him. What the? <laughs> no, because it's that was like what the devil. Yeah, that was like yeah, a play yeah, on. Yeah. Yeah. Let's try to keep things a little <laughs> pleasant. <laughs> <though>. <laughs> Or some level of, you know, gender feminists, we're equal, we're the same. So mm. if you do it, I do it. Okay. Ralph writes, bro violated him, violated him in front of his face, low key. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. All right. So, Adam, you ready for this? Get your pen and paper. Let's go. You ready for this? All right, cool. So the number uh, number one, uh, I'll give you guys a little bit of time to send in your comments, questions, URLs as we wind down. If you want me to carry on, let me know. Uh, otherwise, we'll go ahead and uh, wrap it up. And I thank all of you who have uh, been here with us. And I think this week I'd like to do uh, one of those segments that is the favorite of the entrepreneur um, on how to uh, basically earn money, how to get that bag together. We'll be answering questions on entrepreneurship. I know a number of you might have an idea for an app. You might be currently working on a business. You have an idea. You want to know, is it a good idea? You might have an operating business. You might have reached a snag. You guys will be able to call in, uh, especially if you're members, if you send in your super chat, and we'll answer your business and entrepreneurship questions. And for those who don't know, I have a background. Uh, Unfortunately, I have been in nonprofit. It's a terrible thing. I highly don't recommend it, but I've been in textiles, leathers, uh, hardware, uh, software, firmware, for those of you who know, uh, had 
manufacturing tech devices abroad, manufacturing a variety of products. So um, I can speak to all of it. You name it, I claim it. And so we'll be having one of those coming up. I'll give you guys a little bit of time to send in your comments, questions, um, or if you think I need to carry on, let me know. I'll give you an example. We're just going to go, just give me a little bit of time yeah. here. Um, have you ever cheated before? No, never. Never. Have you ever cheated before? No. Would never. they admit it though? Have you, Lying. Have you okay. ever cheated before? Yeah. Thank okay. you. Have you ever cheated before? You're lying. Got have him. you ever cheated before? <laughs> Got him. That's fucked up. No, I'll tell you why. No, I will tell you why. I'm gonna tell you why. Tell you why. Your mic. Straighten your mic, please. I, am, I will tell you why. why. I can read characters very well. Gotcha. There was a gentleman here named Nick. He was explaining to everyone how the show is going to proceed and mm -hmm. giving us the basics on, you know, how to pay attention, how to track the speaker, how to be respectful, in other words. There was one person who was not paying attention while he was talking. Who was that? Mm -hmm. That was me. That was you. Yeah. So out of everyone sitting here, why are you the one that's sitting here being disrespectful when he's taking out his time to show you how to best present yourself in front of millions of people? Because I was turning off my alarm. Yeah. And I didn't Excuses. want to forget. Excuses. Sure. I hear you because you're a disrespectful person and you were okay. rude and catty Daddy. with him after he told you as a boss, I always look at these things because I, I was rude and catty with him because I put my phone away. No. I don't think I said anything disrespectful. I mean, I, I, th I agree with you. I, I agree that you think you didn't say anything disrespectful. I agree that you think you weren't being disrespectful. Now, Adam's that's your actual coming. nature. So a person like you who is by nature, one who is narcissistic and disregards others, you're the because one that's going to cheat phone, because I was on my phone when I didn't. When Why I were you the only on one phone? out of every, I got two phones right here. I got two phones. Why were you the only Do one? you follow every single fucking rule? Have why you were, ever had a speeding you ticket? One? Like, why are have you, you so ever angry? In trouble? Why are you so angry? Like, in I'm just, did she just ask me have I ever had a speeding ticket? Yeah, that is strange. We have Ross came mm -hmm. back on Cash App and said, Please carry on, Saint. Shout out to Ross. We have Javier says, Tuition. Shout out to JV. And True Indeed Music says peace to the saints. Peace to the saints. That reminds me, I still need to do that music segment. We're going to let people send in their tracks, their beats, and we're going to okay. reply to it. On PayPal, we have Ola said, I'm glad you were able to catch that sucka Adam Bomination talking <laughs> reckless for too long. Yeah, yeah, pulled up. Ask. You're just angry right now. I think right you're now. just as expressive as I am. You're and I angry. think when a woman like kind of like barks back at you, it's, it's an issue. Well, there's no like, need to bark with you've humans. Been, like, you you know, just kind of I'm just going to spade a spade. I'm just saying, it's okay. why were I'm, you, I'm like, asking you a question. Why were you the only one out of everyone here? Why was it you that all of a sudden needed to do that right when he's giving us the directions? Just because I had to do it. Because right, because you didn't care. Didn't, now, so settle. I don't know so, how being on my phone correlates to cheating. That's fucking ridiculous. Like, be fucking for real right now. A lot of things will be hard for you to comprehend. That's why you're in sex work because you Yee. can't offer value in the marketplace. Yee. What the? Love it. Love it. Look at how baby girl got her mouth open. Like she about to make a OnlyFans video right now. The little blonde one mouth open. Like bring that BBC here. Yep. That's right, baby. I said it and I meant it. Eh? Tell that bitch like French Montana. Eh? Yeah, no, if you have well, legit, I think I have no, a lot more to no, offer. If than you just have being significant, if you had like, significant, that I started one second, two months love. ago, like there's a one lot second, love. To offer if that. you had love. significant IQ yeah. and skill set, you'd be able to go into the marketplace and earn a good income such that oh, you didn't gotcha. have to do that. Significant so, IQ, like the women that you're with that like you cheat on them and, so, do, and bring whatever diseases back to them, right? Like those are like, how crazy is that? You got an actual sex worker talking about diseases. We're in the twilight zone, ladies and saints. Amazing. I high value you. women right like you. right yeah so being that you don't have significant income ah. or the ability to offer skills I don't have a significant income ah. okay gotcha are you why do you go keep ahead. cutting me off are right, you mad keep talking no, no. i'll respond go no, ahead no. Talk. i'm, I'm just can you at least scoot saying? your mic yeah. that way there you go, go she ahead. wasn't listening to the directions that's why she didn't know. i'm a bad listener <laughs> Just i'm a cheater okay all right do you want to talk now i just want to make sure you don't interrupt me so go no i'm offering you the floor because you were talking while i was talking go ahead I'm good. You can say what you need to say. Wow. See, your brain did. That's a problem. Yee. That's why you have to interrupt me while I'm talking. <laughs> I gave you the floor. You didn't want to take it because you don't have any thoughts or anything to say. I do have Here's lots my of point. things to say. And don't worry. I'm not really talking to you. I'm speaking against you as a symbol. Mm -hmm. So don't take personal offense to it. a symbol, which is what? It. A symbol of what? A symbol of a declining society where people gotcha. lack values. Mm -hmm. So the point is this. If you had IQ and skills mm -hmm. to offer to the marketplace, gotcha. you can earn a good income. Being that the most valuable thing about you is mm -hmm. something that you never earned. You didn't earn knowledge. You didn't earn skills. It's your breasts that you paid for and your butthole. Ooh. So you market that Ooh. to earn money. Uh -huh. 
<laughs> okay. Got her. So I'm the think? one with like the least IQ here, even though I no, do no, least, no, 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 even no, no, I do you like might the not least be. amount on OnlyFans. I but surmise. Because, but because I'm the only. Now, here's another funny thing. And, and shout out to my brother, Myron. Um, you see a f couple folks in DJ Academics chat. They find any way to hate. They're they going to say any crazy thing that they could say. Cat writes, bruh, think he Myron. But then they'll find out eventually that Myron called into my show before they did Fresh and Fit, right? So he was watching me before I watched him. So how's yeah. that possible? But this is symptomatic of a low IQ, underdeveloped society where you're underdeveloped individuals, where you have people who have such limited experience that their frame of reference is small. So for example, they see a black man in a suit. He could only be Kevin Samuels because Kevin Samuels is the only black guy I've seen in a suit. <laughs> Imagine, it's really sick and sad. Uh, that's how dim-witted these persons are. It hurt, it saddens me sometimes. It saddens me. He's black. He's wearing a suit. It's Kevin Samuels. God damn it. Jesus Christ. He's bald. He's Andrew Tate. He has hair plugs. He's anyone in the manosphere. Pick one. Pick one. All right. Carrying on. Only woman who's barking back at you like I'm this brain dead fucking bimbo who has no, nothing to offer to that's society. Not why. I mean, then what? Then well, why? let's test it. Let's test it real quick. Okay. What's your age? Adi. I'm 28, but I'm not testing. Ooh, I'm not doing a test. Uh, you get, okay, you're 28. I'm getting up there. Fans. You're That's right. Amazing. My eggs are drying up. Okay. I'm not going to be fertile. No one's going to want me. I'm not a high okay. value woman. Like, That's what fine. Else? We're not going. Well, Here's where we're going. If you weren't doing OnlyFans, how would you earn a six figure plus income? I do. Inter <laughs> Wait, <laughs> like, speaking of. Go ahead. Go ahead. I work. I work at one of the highest club, highest, uh, like, huh? what? Huh? I work at one of the best clubs in Las uh, Vegas. Seem, I didn't turn this bitch into DJ Academics, ball. She couldn't even speak English at that point. She's so discombobulated. She's like, I work at the high, high, who, high, who, I, I'm just flustered. No, you are obliterated. That's what you are. You are wasted fatality. You're done. That's what you are. You're fried. Your brains have been fried. You've been destroyed. That's what's going on right now. You're trying to recover. No, there's no recovery. It's done, love. Just give it up. Throw in the towel. Well, you're having trouble with English for a second. Tell us. I'm perfectly fine. Okay. Notice, Act is a hater, but he can't even find anything to hate on because the performance is so strong. He's just in awe. English. Go on. I'm a little riled up. Yes. I'll tell you what Adam Lee's. Oh, I was about to leave. I'm a little thrown off. One more minute. Okay. By you attacking me because I think a lot of these other That's girls. That's because and people and never and address you. And I respect. People like, never address you directly. Here. Um, I think you're just attacking me because I'm responding to you, and you don't like that, and you don't like women who go against. They always women. got this bullshit story. They be trying to get themselves so much credit. You don't like women who. Uh, who make more money than you. What are you talking about? You don't. You don't like women who stand up to you. You mean complain? You don't like women who have an opinion. You mean say dumb things, but think it's a smart thing. You don't like women. Like, no, I don't like you. This doesn't have nothing to do with women. It's just you, love. Stop trying to drag down the whole gender with you. No, you're dumb, and we're talking about you right now. Okay. Oh, it's crazy out here. You have to say that's fine. and that's why you choose but the women that do you, you do. mind do you mind answering the question i asked oh, you what is the question uh, okay i'll say it one more time what skills do you have that would help you earn a six-figure plus income at age 28 you're right nothing there's nothing <laughs> that i there's no skills that i have at all you're trying to escape there's nothing but, but I'm there's, saying no, there's no skills no right. you're right because you're, right. A, you're a cocktail server right. in las vegas yeah right and there's nothing else yes. that i have to offer and you, she's trying to play it off right now and that's a that's a strategy very nice what's the strategy tell us uh, um Please. but the fact is Doctor. i live in las vegas I, i've seen your type many times generally they're younger gotcha. but the point you're is this. Old, i know man you're, you're no really honestly they should they should be firing someone marries me yeah, like, no, they should be. I don't know about that, but they should certainly be firing you and get someone of the appropriate age to do such a low level job. Oh, yeah. But the point is this you why are you opening your mouth wide like that? It's not time. She, <laughs> Bring I, the I, camera I, out. I, She's ready. But but here's the point. Fine. Here's the point. You're currently a cocktail server, mm -hmm. which consists of, hey, I'll have a Jack and Coke. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then you walk away, tell someone else Jack and Coke. Mm -hmm. They hand you a Jack and Coke. You come back and bring it back to me mm -hmm. and hope that I would give you a good tip. Mm -hmm. That's your skill set. Mm -hmm. And what about it? It's a hard work. The and what about <laughs> it? And you know, the sad thing is these hoes are so dumb. Like, I almost feel like I should do like a segment. These hoes are so dumb. And <laughs> just keep filling in the blank. These hoes are so dumb. 
look, I just told the broad that her skill set is going to grab a Jack and Coke for Vegas drinkers. And then the, the dumb foreign one was like, that's just so hot. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? We build that wall. God damn it. Bring Trump back. Build that wall. Keep these motherfuckers out. We need a wall everywhere. I don't give a shit if it don't border a country. Build a wall. Fuck the beaches. Ain't no more beaches. These dumb motherfuckers is getting in here. I just told the broad your skill set consists of picking up a glass filled with liquid and handing it off to somebody and smiling. That's your skill set. And then the dumb foreign ones over like, that's it is hard work. It's hard to work. You ever try to bring vodka? You get vodka in the cup. You bring vodka to customer, and then you go back and get more vodka. It's hard to work. I'm like, bitch, didn't you grow up in a gulag or some shit? Like, how is anything hard work to you? Ain't it 30 below in your country? I mean, goddamn, ain't your dad a political prisoner? How is anything hard? Everything should be easy work to you, okay? Your third world ass should just be happy to be in the free world. Matter of fact, shut the fuck up and call immigration. Get this bitch out of here. Does ICE only take Latinos? Why is she still here? God damn it. Make an exception. I demand. And why you got this bullshit ass red hair? You ain't Peggy Bundy, bitch. What the fuck? Matter of fact, y'all that slipped on you. Y'all know who Peggy Bundy is, okay? Might have to pull it up because low key, I'm feeling it. <laughs> and what about yeah. It? yeah. There is no skill set is the point, which is to say, if I took oh your brain, it. if I took your oh, brain is. and placed your brain into a man's body, you would be in poverty. Mm. Mm. You caught me. Mm. Now, look. Because you're brainless. Oh. On. Now, look. Even these are all haters and nerds because they follow DJ academics. Right. So even his haters and nerds who sincerely hate me. You got one. He's a clown. Brody go say this is no matter what. Got to love the people with no photos, right? <laughs> Here's a guy with a photo. Shocker. He says something reasonable. Bro speaking facts. Okay. That makes sense. Anyways, this guy's obsessed with this. That's a bootleg fresh and fit. I love those people who are too low IQ to say anything novel. They just like keep repeating what other people said as though no one noticed it. Like, yes, we've all noticed that it's a bootleg fresh and fit. Thank you, Captain Obvious. It's like those dumb people who sit there in the chat like, he ball head. Wait five minutes. He ball head. Wait five minutes. He got a milk dud head. Wait five minutes. <laughs> that boy ball head. <laughs> like, God damn, bro. Like, I'm starting to get gay vibes from you, man. Like, quit staring at my fucking head. That, but like, you weird as hell. Like, bro, we get it. He ball head. That is fresh and fit. The white version. We get it. That's the problem with males today is that they're not masculine. They talk too much. And the worst part about it, they don't think before they talk. Come on, dummy. How many people thought he ball head? You know why? Because unlike BBMLD and Adolf 22 and Jay Waller, I don't get hair plugs. Unlike them. No, I'm not doing it. Unlike uh, what's, what's, what's the dude's name? DJ Fatademics. I'm not about to wear a hat 24 seven because I'm not ashamed. You see, he's ashamed. I have tremendous confidence. You heard me? Yeah, man, I could do whatever I want, go over wherever I want. Tremendous confidence. So I'm not going to wear a hat constantly because I'm embarrassed. You dig? So it's like, don't say the most obvious thing because, A, you're in a chat with a thousand people. Somebody's already said it. Somebody's already thought it. You're wasting time. This is a message to the dummies. I hope this public service announcement reaches somebody, honestly. Darius is back and said, work. We're quetocratic republics. <laughs> Shout out. Appreciate the support, Saint. You're right. Yeah. I'm just good for nothing. Blame. Yep. You can't. No, you are good for something. Uh -oh. That's why you have OnlyFans. And that's my point is that you're that's what you're good right for. <laughs> and I, I, I'm not trying to be rude, but it's just that we're. I think we're, you are trying to be rude. No, I think, I'm just being yeah. honest. No, I mean, being I honest. Do about, I mean, do you, even, be, do you even know who us. I am as a person? I mean, before yeah. like throwing these insults that I'm just this. You're an OnlyFans girl. It doesn't matter. No, that's to I think offer? we should avoid ad hominem. Is there Adam comes in ad hominem when you actually there were some, there were some, but brainless like over, might be a little. Oh, that's ah, a do you even know me? Like you don't even. And you're only calling me brainless because I'm the only one. Responding to you. Do you think you know what I think? So, so has think, him so a little bit upset. So you know. Now this is good. Pay attention to this. Let's see if DJ Academics questions the lies. Before we do that, we have Ola is back on PayPal and said Fat Academics trying to find the bad in what you say, but can't. If right. he's reasonable, he would say, Why do I hate big homie? Exactly. 
And fat people are never reasonable. I mean, just imagine you're eating, you're full, but you keep eating. How unreasonable is that? I mean, it's unreasonable. I mean, you're fat. You keep eating. Now you're like, I'm a man, but I have titties. That's not reasonable. Fat people are completely unreasonable. I don't trust them. They're perpetually dirty. There's too many nooks and crannies and crevices. Do you think DJ Academics ever lifts up his titty and cleans under that titty? I would bet my bottom dollar there's like a line of crust under that titty. There's a crust line under that titty. I bet my bottom dollar. You think he's ever squeezed his own titties? Like he'd be beating his meat, squeezing his own titties, just trying to imagine he's a bitch. <laughs> Just imagine, because you know them titties soft as hell. You know they soft as hell, boy. <laughs> Carry on. Oh, my Lord. I'm sorry. Every girl sitting on this side of the table earns more money than him. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Let me pause that right now. Um, ah, ah, do they believe that? Pink looks like she thinks... Uh, like do they believe that like pink looks like one of the broken wait pink oh i thought you're talking about the red hair no yeah no i think pink is one of the broker ones if i had to yeah, rate she, i think she thinks like she's going along with whatever he says oh yeah she's trying to get on that show yeah, yeah, yeah. she's trying to get like she's one of those females that if she, whoever she thinks is the guy she's gonna try to cozy up to him and get what she can get yeah, she's a she's an extractive female she reminds me of a prostitute and i'll tell you why what most guys don't realize is that prostitutes hate men most of you guys don't know that. You see, prostitutes often have been abused in childhood by males, and so they grow up hating men. And a P is just the one male that's able to dominate and manage their destructive, dysfunctional personality. So she very much so has that prostitute mentality. She's extractive. So she's not looking at Adam like, I respect you. She's looking at him like, okay, Marquette's closer to a P, and Marquette's closer to a T, a trick. And she knows she can extract from Adam. You meant Adam. What did you I say? said Marquette both times. Oh, did I? Yeah. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Adam is closer to a trick. Yo, no, I'm a big boss dog. Carrying on. Thank you for that. I appreciate you. He, uh, he's been outed in the past. And he's for, mad about it. He basically he's LARPs Honestly, as a rich guy on the internet. If I was and absolutely... I just, now, here's a funny thing. Um, They often do this. And then you see the one in the pink who is clearly mad. And Adam, who is clearly mad. Then what do they do? And he's mad about it. Where have I cut off anyone during the whole conversation? Where have I raised my voice during the whole conversation? Not at all. In fact, even when I was calling her brain dead, I did it calmly because I don't even consider it an insult to call her brain dead because she clearly brain dead. You're a cocktail server. You're damn near 30 years old and your job is pick up a glass, let somebody fill it up and then go hand it off. That's your job at 30? Like, goddamn, you dumb. You brain dead. Shout out to Rayleigh Swimming. He writes, imagine you get smoked so bad uh your windows 98 reboot into into stoke mid live stream i feel you marquette if that's ever me quote bridget get the clapper end quote uh, look it was that time honestly she got did that kind of dirty on Poor, behalf would mean of nothing. all the girls it would mean nothing i think we all are in kind of an agreement that's amazing. That now look at this <laughs> this dude thought he had the juice he thought he had the sauce Adam over here coordinating some shit off some Jerry Maguire shit. Like, you know, I think we all agree that we're all richer than him, including you and you and you. We're all richer than him. We agree. So we should all leave this podcast. Who's with me? Who's with me? Who's with me? And then he gets up and like nobody leaves with him. And you're like, well, Marquette, the pink one left. Ah, but she came back. It's sad. It's really sad here. It man gave an inspirational speech. This is amazing. You know your ass was ready. Like as soon as I flamed her ass, he's like, he's getting more ruthless. He's getting more ruthless. I gotta get out of here. This motherfucker was sweating and shaking in his boots when he saw what I did to her. He's like, damn, if he ain't spared a bitch, he coming for me. Yes, I was. Yes, we I don't was. really want to sit here and listen to someone who's basically a scam artist tell us what's wrong exactly. with our yeah, lives. This wait, is amazing. What do you do for, you so do for I'm kind of you on money? the edge of walking out. So here's a good one. You got a cocktail server. I mean, and there's no disrespect to people who work jobs. Work a job. That's great. I love it. Um, but you got a cocktail service. Like, what do you do for work? What do you do for work? Like, you're a cocktail server. Like, you don't even factor into that. Like, you shouldn't even ask that question. You're a cocktail server. I don't care if my job was plucking the ball hairs. Matter of fact, plucking the hairs out of Fat Joe's asshole. I don't care if that was my job. It would still be superior to your job because it requires some level of skill. Okay? Thank you. 
a toddler could do your job. Don't ask anyone what job they do. It's, it's inappropriate. That's not your lane. Okay. Thank you. Now, with regards to like, you know, this guy is a scammer. It's like, why will no one ever elaborate and explain the scam? Because I want to know, God damn it, damn it. I want to know. But again, we're going to give them a chance because there's going to be a show. Get your, get your evidence together. Get your documents together. We're going to do a show. And uh, we'll, we'll make it interesting for you. And you can come on and I'll let you talk. And sh- hell, I'll let you share your screen. You hear me show you evidence. And like, this guy's a scammer on July 5th, 1992. He did this. Like, I will let you go through that. You feel me? Like, off some forensic file shit. Like, and a, a, a forensic pathologist discovered this evidence that Marquette Devon Burton. Like, I will let you do that. Um, so get ready, get your evidence ready. You're going to have to turn your camera on, you know, so that we can see you and you can speak and be understood, but I'm gonna let you do it. And we're going to see. And in fact, I'm going to give an open invitation to, uh, the blue haired booty bandit, uh, to DJ Fatademics, uh, to cuck 22. Um, I think those are the, oh, and to BBMLD. And I'm going to invite all of them to come and just explain it and just lay it out for everybody so we can all understand. Cause Really, we you know that's a dangerous person. We need to understand how some of the scamming prevent them from scamming. Yeah, absolutely. We're gonna do a show, and they're all invited, and I will let them on screen, and I will let them uninterrupted explain. Because you guys may remember, you guys may remember, BBMLD came on. He tried to do the same thing Adam did. This is what they do. I'm that good. I'm that bulletproof. They all do the same thing, which is lie, and they all go to the same lie, created by a homosexual. And when he said, he's like, "Didn't you scam someone?" I was like. Did I tell tell me here here like matter of fact I'll give you three minutes uninterrupted boom I put a timer on here three minutes uninterrupted go tell us oh well uh did, uh well yo, did you uh no 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 don't don't ask me shit I'm trying to learn with everybody else because I don't know what the fuck you talking about you got three minutes go what happened he just looked like an idiot because he was lying and we're gonna do the same thing okay Devonte's back on Cash App said he sounds like a white woman same exact tonality oh yeah he he's a whore. I don't want to be totally right. I'm, 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 I'm not other, walking out on like a what do you do I made other pop. I just don't no, really do want to do listen work? to a scam artist. You can, tell me what's what do you do for Google my name? Right? You can Google my name. Right just on. imagine a, a uh, cocktail waitress again, an OnlyFans cocktail. Like, think about how much money you're not making on OnlyFans when you have to show your butthole at night and then carry around drinks all day. Like, God damn, you working hard. The reason people get into sex work in a developed country, like if you were saying like Addis Ababa, Ethiopia, you get into sex work because the economy is underdeveloped. You don't have options. It's a retrograde economy. Conversely, when you're in a developed economy, you get into sex work because it's called fast money. You get the money fast and in large amounts. And it's like, damn, bitch, you still broke. You're still handing out drinks to niggas like all day in the Vegas heat. Like, God, that's crazy. And now in the Vegas cold wearing a skimpy outfit, like that's crazy to me. It's like, don't show your butthole and not get well compensated. Like, I just, I think that's peculiar. But I guess at the end of the day, how many times can you show your butthole and still get paid for it, right? So you could only dress up one butthole so many ways. You know what I'm saying? At the end of the day, it's the same butthole. You could put uh, however many pairs of underwear on. It's the same one. You Let's, can Google my name. If you right Google now. his Does name, know you'll, name? You'll, you'll and I heard, exhilarated. I hurt your feelings early. Uh, and you, you didn't hurt my feelings uh, at all. It's just yes, I did. Yo, Flacco about to get his ass whooped for this, man. Remember, <laughs> that's the nigga that Flacco was like, yo, the big. Look. You know Brody got flamed when DJ Academic said Flacco about to get his ass with, which is to say uh, Flacco is the guy who brought me on to No Jumper, and Adam knew about it. But basically, Ak is saying because Adam got flamed so badly, he's going to have to lash out at someone. We all know who Adam22 is not going to lash out at. The guy who asked him for a fade, yours truly, and he declined the fate. So he's not going to lash out at me. He has to find someone weaker or someone who can't fight back, which would mean one of those yes men on his payroll. Uh, that makes sense. And, you know, shout out to Ak for uh, being a good hater, quality hater. He won't just say, come out and say, like, damn, saying the center flamed the whole shit, came in, burnt down the whole shit, went viral, and deuced out. Just say it, man. Just say it. We all know it. Just say it, Ak. Big homie. Remember when Flacco was like, yo, I'm here. Yo, some of y'all might call him this, but I just call him 
big homie. <laughs> he said that so homo. I'm trying, trying to do the this whole, whole moral superiority thing, and it's not working because you're broke. Your feelings. The whole you're he's mad. Broke. broke. Here's the funny. You got a milk <laughs> dud on top of your head. Hey, that was weird to me. Listen to how Adolf Twenty Two said. He didn't say you have a milk dud on top of your head. He said it like almost with this African American affect to his accent. It was strange. It's like he tried to become like mixed with black for a moment. Like he turned into Steph Curry for a second. It was peculiar. Just listen to how he said it. It made me uncomfortable, honestly. Was he culturally appropriating at this moment? It was weird. Just listen. Do this whole, whole moral superiority thing, and it's not working because you're broke. Your feelings. The you're whole actually broke. Listen. Here's the funny. You got a milk <laughs> dud on <laughs> top of your head. Here's the funny. That was guy. weird. By the way, to be fair, and, and I'll call the space. Damn, did he just stutter like that? Let me rewind it. I enjoyed it. Go ahead. Here's the funny. <laughs> guy. By the way, to be fair, and, and I'll call the space. This page. Um. Yeah. Yeah. This thing's broken shit, <laughs> and he's definitely a liar and a fraud. But. Wait, 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 wait. I want you all to notice consistently. I'm broke. Show me the evidence. Just show me some evidence. I'm a fraud. Show me some evidence. Notice they throw out names, but they never explain. They never elaborate. This is political spin. You're going to see this very consistently. You see this in political cycles, right? Uh, one politician calls, it's called mud slinging. You call him a name, but you never explain. That's like me saying like, Adam's a pedophile. But the thing about me, if I say Adam's a pedophile, then I'll go directly say, oh yeah, here, here's the evidence of him being a pedophile because I'm a thorough, honest, academic personality, whereas these guys are just internet liars. And so they throw something out, but they never give any evidence. Like we listen to him say it so many times, but like not one time. If I ask anyone who just heard this, like, well, how, what was the scam? Nobody knows. Because if we ask them, nobody knows. And this is what we have to deal with with the internet. But I think eventually people will say, you know what? I heard guy, this guy speak many times and every time it makes sense. It's authentic every time. And you said that, but I, I don't see it. I don't see it. Where is it? So over time, the truth will come to light. And that's why I can't wait to have that show. Yeah. It'll be a fun one. And I don't want any haters like, oh, I was at work. Nah, F all that. I'm telling everybody long in advance, give them at least a week. Take this hour off to do your hating. I want you to take this hour off to be a good hater. He was making some valid points um, that what, 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 he was just mad at the girls, I guess. But he was making some valid points about the relationship dynamic with Adam. I thought it was reasonable questions, even though they may have been targeted because I think he has some issue with Adam because he showed up on No Jumper before and he felt that Adam was like talking shit. But, you know, what I mean, I think that could have been a decent conversation. Um, but, you know, this is what I said to Adam because Adam sent me the clip and I was like, dog, with all due respect is like, oh, damn, I really hurt Adam's feelings. Adam sent DJ Academics the clip like, hey, did he get me? Ack, what do you think? How bad was it? Was it bad, bad? <laughs> Yes, it was terrible. Bro, you got flamed. <laughs> That's bad. Like, you didn't get got your ass roasted and then sent your, sent your mans the clip of you getting flamed. That's bad. Like, goddamn, I won and I didn't send nobody the clip. That ball was impacted. I've impacted his family. I bet he arguing with his wife right now over me. Lena, baby, it ain't too late to, to go ahead and upgrade. You heard me? Now, I can't sleep with you, but I think I can monetize you a little bit better. Okay? I'll let a boss now. A lot of boss, Marquette Devon on Instagram, Lena. My nigga, like, you don't need to sit down with, like, at the end of the day, this dude isn't one-tenth as successful as Adam, and I'm not even talking about porn. I'm talking about just, like... This is a weird world we're in, right? He's like, I'm not even talking about porn. Like, what kind of conversation is going on here? He's doing what so it strange. Actually, I've had He's a on your fans like, for, like, $400. That was great. That was Sweet. great. Right. Now, listen, you got to know that a guy is lying through his teeth when he says something this ludicrous. This man said a $400 scam. Damn, is that even a scam? Shit. Like, I mean, do I, if I'm a scam, right, I feel like I got to put in more effort than that. That's not a strong effort. $400. I need a better take. Honestly, I do. I need a better take. That's no, that's no bueno. $400. Come on. I'm better than that. 
I'm hard work. I was actually broke. It literally would mean nothing to me. Then if, have them why did you do an NFT scam like, on like, your fans like, for like four hundred dollars? Like he said, for like, did he say like four hundred dollars or four hundred dollars? For like four hundred dollars. That was crazy. It's amazing how people just make up shit. Silly checkmate. He, Silly he, 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 <laughs> scammer. What? Damn, Brody said. Brody said checkmate. Like word. That's himself. that was crazy. Like <laughs> I'm gonna start doing that shit. I'm gonna say some shit that's like not fire. Then say checkmate right after. That was crazy. This motherfucker said. You did a scam for four hundred dollars. Checkmate. What? Whoa! <laughs> you're very confident, my friend. Like you're very confident in yourself. Checkmate. What? The fuck? Yeah, Listen, yeah. I could have robbed the corn man. For people who are from L.A., you're, you know the corn man, uh, little dude that pushed a little cart. My nigga be slinging corn. He put the the mayonnaise on the corn. Then he put a little bit of chile on the the motherfucking mayonnaise corn be good as hell he also have other random ass things that you might like like pica fresca and random mexican candies that are delicious I, i'm pretty sure the homies didn't rob the corn man for more than 400 dollars. i mean god damn it. it ain't nobody been down bad like that since they was like 10 years old like 10 years old this is crazy come on brody you tripping man and i feel bad for all the people when i said the corn man they're like a corn man what's that there's never a corn man in my neighborhood well you missed out god damn it the corn man is epic also you guys might have had the ice cream man but we also had another guy who didn't have an ice cream truck but god damn it he had one of them push carts and it was delicious okay shout out to the corn man then there's this other stuff i can't even remember what it was called but it was like this light color kind of like a light brown maybe sometimes pink maybe that was just after i put the hot that hot sriracha on it it was after i put the sriracha it's kind of like shaped in the shape of a wheel this is real la stuff it was delicious as well i don't know what that was called sometimes you put a little bit of lemon on there it was delicious that dude you could rob him for about Four hundred dollars. Four hundred dollars. I don't even know if I'd go out of my way to create a whole scam involving NFTs and crypto. I mean, damn, that's elaborate as hell for four hundred dollars. That's too much work. Goddamn, no, that's too much work. We it's have ridiculous. dreams. Said peace to the saints for the flame putting out the real game. Yes, indeed. I think I'm gonna. And if any girls want to live with me, I'd be happy to take you. Now listen, he said. I think I'm gonna leave, and if uh. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> if uh, any girls want to leave with me, then I'll be happy to take you. Uh, by the way, who's with me? <laughs> this is good. This is good. Is that one loud mouth broad in the pink? Now she's the only one saying anything. Hold on, hold on. He's rage quitting. He's rage quitting. Rage quitting. You're not on the blood level He's of me. Guys, 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 let's just let's just oh, take a little I didn't mean here. to make him I think I'm done, bro. <laughs> I just I don't want to listen oh, to this guy anymore. Just, and I feel like I might do something extreme oh, if I were to stick around. Hold on. When I first walked in and I again, this is why you can't trust anything the guy says. Can we trust that he when he says this guy's a scammer? Okay. But then he also says, I, I got to leave because I, I might do something extreme. Word? You're talking about the same guy that literally walked up to you and said, I want to fight you. And you're like, no, nah, it's just content, bro. It's just content, my boy. Like, you're talking about that guy. Like, bro, no one believes you. You have no integrity, no credibility. Now you're talking about a fight when the cameras are rolling and we in the studio. Bro, you phony as hell, man. Good Lord, you phony. I, said, I might you have to fade. polish that milk duck. I, when I first walked, <laughs> when I saw you downstairs, I said, do you want the fade? And wow. you said no. Hmm? Uh, okay. See what you when I first did? walked. What else is Brick Baby at? Brick <laughs> Baby supposed to take care of this nigga. Brick Baby, where you be at, nigga? And I said, do you Thanks want the fade? You said no. We could have took care of that before the show started. Did you, do you guys have like some pre-existing beef or something? <laughs> Listen. Wait, wait, okay, can well, we switch? Yo, I like this guy right here. Uh, Typical, yeah. <laughs> he, he's like the whiter version of Adam. He's acting like he had no idea. Now that's crazy. He said the whiter version of Adam, which is, hmm. I guess that does make sense in as much as Adam immerses himself within the lower class blats, which doesn't really make you any less white if you're working them, right? Isn't that what the slave master used to do, right? No, really, that's what the slave master used to do. He was immersed among the blats, but he was making them work. And making them toil in the unforgiving earth such that they could 
harvest the cotton and he could profit by it. Excuse me. So that doesn't make you any blacker just because you make the blacks work on your behalf and enrich you. I mean, that's quite smart, actually. I can't hate that. I'm not, he, in my book, he has maintained all of his white points, but I will concede that um, Brian also has a lot of white points. It's a battle. It's a battle, honestly. Yeah. I, <laughs> nigga, he's seen it. He, he knew they had smoke, nigga. He set up this show as a good show. And there you go. There you have it. DJ Fatademics. He said, You knew they had smoke. Of course. We all knew he knew. Everyone who's reviewed it has said, Nah, you knew. The only person who said he didn't know was Brian, but everyone else said, nah, B, you knew, B, and niggas die every day, B, uh, and you should remember that. Don't play games like that. It's not funny. Adam, when I came in, when I came in downstairs, the first the thing fuck? I said, when I saw him, I said, do you need that fade? And he said, no, <sighs> it's just content. Oh, I didn't know you guys had like Yeah, as a... soon as I walked up, I said, do you need that fade? And he said, no, it's Can just content. Oh, but I mean, like, did you guys have like a previous? Uh... Yeah, Wait, because what, I went on No Jumper. He waited until I left the state of California, and then he started talking crazy. And I said, if you had an issue with Marquette Devon Burton, you could have said that to me when I was right there in your studio. Like, you don't have to wait oh, until I leave. Did you do an episode? This is funny as hell, bro, right? <laughs> bro, right. He thought the bitches would leave with him. He sure as hell did think that. With him, I don't listen. I was like, you don't have to wait until I leave. I don't know. And then he DM'd me on Instagram, like, hey, bro, you, we got to like do a show when you come back. It's like your phone. Are you leaving? Yeah. Um, the soup to be had there. But also, you know, I, I think number one, you can't sit down with people you don't respect. And I don't think Adam respects him. And here's the thing about. Hold on. You're trying too hard, DJ Fatademics. Your wife gets railed by random guys. You have no level of respect. You can't you can't use the word respect. Respect's not a concept for porn actors. That's not a concept. Please stop it. Please stop it. You're silly. About um the Satan Sinner dude. The Saint the Sinner Brother, dude. Please. Like I know you think even me, me and you are in some feud. We're not, right? No, you're not on my level. You'd be terrified. You'd be terrified. You got obliterated. In fact, I gotta remember to re-release that just to flame him again for my own entertainment anyways um ladies and gentlemen i'll give you all some time to send in your comments questions as we wind down uh shout out to dj fatademics i do appreciate you because as you have no personality and intellect you can only do reaction videos and being that i am the talk of the internet right now you were forced to do a reaction video on me and honestly again i appreciate that even though your fan base is largely nerds and nerds are not really my cup of tea not my target demographic but all the same i appreciate it thank you very much um, Saint so took you a little bit of time to send your comments questions as we wind down. Man, DJ Academics really needs to lose some weight. No, and it's so strange. It just goes to his face, you know. That's peculiar. Is there a surgery if you wanted to reduce, you know how people get liposuction on their body? Right. Because I feel like he'd look very imbalanced if he got liposuction on his body, but then his face was still fat. They can lipo under the chin and like on the jawline. Word. Yeah. They could take it out of here. Mm -hmm. And they could take it out of here. Not like the cheeks, but like because he has the jawline. he's very cheeky. Yeah. So they can't take it out of the cheeks. So if he got lipo, he'd look weird as hell. Yeah. Very imbalanced. Top heavy, face heavy. <laughs> That's crazy. That's unfortunate. So he actually has to lose weight. It's not even really yeah. optional. On PayPal, we have Jaylon said, what's really funny about the whole crypto NFT bull, they say, first and foremost, you never made an NFT. Right. Second, you made a crypto coin that everybody made money off of if right. you got in on time. You literally told us to get it when it was a dollar. Yes. When it got too high, you told everybody dip out. Yes. It went up to 113. It's now sitting at 87. 87. Amazing. The proof is there, but nobody looks for the truth. Amazing. Let me just repeat that. I created a coin that you would buy at $1. You would have multiplied your money a hundred times. That's crazy. That's crazy. A hundred times. That's insane. And the coin right now is sitting at 87, 87 cents or $87. Uh, it just says 87. If it's 80, $87, that's a tremendous value added. If it's 87 cents, you lost 13 cents? Yeah. 
but you wouldn't have lost 13 cents because the only persons I told to buy it were the persons who were there in the conference because we were creating crypto during the conference. We we're creating NFTs during the conference. That's what I was teaching. And we put it on the community tab that same day, that same morning. Huh? Come on. Come on. This is silliness. Silliness. We have Javier is back. He said, my city is 54% Mexican. Thank you. Grew up on corn and churro. The ch There's a churro, man? No, bro. Don't tell me that. I'm going to need my fade from somebody. Because if there's a churro, man, I'm big mad. I'm big mad. There's a churro, man? How he keep the churros hot? Do you believe there's a churro man? That'd be that'd be nice. Do you believe it though? I, I don't think he's lying. So yeah, I, I believe it. A churro man. That's crazy as hell. I just need to know, are the churros hot? Number one. That's all I need to know. I'm tripping. Was there a churro man? I don't think there was. That's crazy. I'm gonna have to really think about this. I gotta call the homie up. Anyway, Saints, it's been a pleasure. Last time I had a churro was in La Ciudad. Yeah. Huh? In Mexico delicious it wasn't it good it was good look the churro spot in mexico city wasn't that during covid yeah oh damn i wish i wouldn't have said that during this stream but anyways yeah man the the churro spot in uh, la ciudad mexico it was crowded and packed like packed. packed churros were delicious anyway saints it's been a pleasure to have this time to fellowship with you until next time peace of the saints